time, and uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, so we have the road crew here with us. Uh, Phil Hayek is not going to be here tonight. Mary Skinner is going to be a little late. Um, and we have Victor. And the first, uh, do we have any amendments to the agenda? Yes. Uh, Shane wanted to amend the agenda to just have a discussion of downgrading or discontinuing um, Colby Road or uh, and the Class 4 section of Dolan Road. And also, you told me to remind you to have a to discuss yeah, I got the that one. COVID feud things. Yeah. Can we talk about that policy change, too? Oh. Okay. What? Well, yeah. I just wanted to clarify that employee policy thing change. Remember, you came over? Yep. And it didn't say what. What year was it, sir? What's that? What year the vacation time was going to be? Right. And there was a couple other small things, but I don't remember what they were. But but that's the big one. Yeah. You got it right there, right? You mean like fiscal year versus calendar year? Well, no, you, you had to use up so much vacation oh. time, but it said by July 1st. 120 hours, yeah. But they, they were just wanting to make sure they didn't lose their time, which, of course, they haven't, but we're just going to clarify it in the policy, but to say 2022. I'm sorry. I thought we had resolved that when we, uh, when we met. But, um, yeah, but that's right, but you said we had to change it. We had to put it. We had to put it. Oh, in. Oh, to make it more clear. Right. Yeah, you had to yeah. put it in writing. It's like you said that. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we missed that. I apologize for that. You're not losing any time. That's no. the bottom line. Okay. So don't worry about that. Um, so we, does somebody have exactly? Do you have what, exactly what the change is that we discussed, Shane? Oh, um, did you wrote them down on that. I don't have them in this. I don't have them down. Me. I have it on my other copy. Okay. Well, he would share them with me. Again, I'll make sure they get all right. Okay. Implemented. Okay. Can I ask in there. You, Peter? Yes. That is not a change to the personnel policy. That was something that you were giving them over and above because this personnel policy will continue on for years until we make another change to it. It was something that we said in the meeting that we were going to have the people use it all up by a certain date, but it was not a policy change. It was because everybody had been running over due to COVID. Right, correct. And so, it, but it's not a policy. No. I mean, because no, it's after not a policy this change. year, it doesn't affect the personnel policy. Okay. So it's, it's just something year. that you told them was going to be Yes, done. yeah. So we shouldn't right. change the personnel You shouldn't policy. change the yeah. personnel okay. policy because okay. that okay. that's a policy. And this that, is an but exception. But if that you guys want exception. something in writing saying that, well, you can we give can them something in yeah. writing. But I'm saying no, 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 you that's fine. I don't, policy. I don't disagree with that at all. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry about that. So, um, you gentlemen requested a meeting, and here you are, and here we are. So, we're ready to hear whatever you have to say. I'll start. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, our rate of pay here seems to be quite low in comparison to other places. I, uh, I really don't understand why it seems like we're overlooked quite often on that. And uh, I'm, I'll be 10 years here and we haven't had a pay increase in like three years. And no, that's incorrect. Excuse me? You've had a pay increase every year. That's a cost of living increase. That's a pay increase. Anyway, just to be clear, okay. Uh, I I don't feel it's being unfair or anything if the help is paid at least a dollar more per hour to bring us up to par with other places. Where where are you? Uh, yeah, comparing? what are your other places just that you're comparing? People you know that work for other towns and as the time they've been there in comparison to the time I've been here. Well, 
I would say a couple of things to you, and this sounds like a recurrent conversation, I know, but I'm going to say it. First of all, it's time to consider pay increases in the fall at budget time. And I said to you gentlemen last year, if you want to have a discussion about pay, the time to have it is when we're developing our budget. We didn't hear a word from any of you at that time. So here we are. We prepared our budget, public information. Budget was approved at town meeting. We're now in the fiscal year where that budget is in effect. And now six weeks into the fiscal year, you're coming to us and saying, you're not happy. Your timing stinks. It stinks. This isn't when we consider things like this. So you're asking us potentially, if we were to do something like this, that requires a special town meeting, a whole bunch of hurly burly, potentially amending tax rates, all kinds of stuff. So that's a problem. But the other thing that's a problem for me is, is when we have compared our pay to other towns, and we have some documentation of that, um, we feel our compensation is right in there. So I know you'd like to get a dollar more, and I understand that, and I'm speaking for myself, not the select board, but this is the wrong time to be talking about that. We've given you gentlemen extra raises, we've given you bonuses, we've done all kinds of things in recent years in response to your requests, and I'm not saying we wouldn't do that again. But to come to us now, six weeks into the fiscal year, and ask us to consider a raise, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's a problem. So do you have, do you have documentation of, of right this? Now. Right, so you're just going based on what somebody tells you over the phone or in the bar at night or wherever you talk to them. The work for other towns. Yeah. I so. would also just add that um, when, when we, like as an employer, when I'm looking at the rate of pay that I can offer someone, I also consider the benefits package as a huge part of the compensation. So not just the hourly rate, but what you're getting for health insurance as well as um, retirement benefits, uh, life insurance, all those things that, uh, that total an entire compensation package. So it's hard to, even though it's easy to say, well, so-and-so makes 22 an hour and I only make 21, that's not telling the whole story of how much that person is really making. Um, so when we're thinking about how much we pay you, it's not just on the hourly rate, it's also what else are we offering as benefits to make this job meaningful and something that you're, you know, a place that you're going to want to continue working at. Um, so, and, and Peter's right, um, you know, generally when we look at salaries, it's at a specific time of year. Um, and, you know, I think that you know, we can revisit this when we start to do our budgeting again in in uh, December, I guess it is, November? October. October, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not that it's far right away. Up. Yeah, it's coming but, right up. But anything that we decide then wouldn't actually happen until the start of the new fiscal year. Um, anyway, July 1. Um, and, and we do, um, we're very mindful of the fact that there are other jobs out there that have CDLs and um, you know, you, you could probably get a job someplace else, um, maybe making some more money, but there's other things to consider such as, you know, your commutes, your benefits, right? So someone may pay you more, but you're not going to get the same amount of benefits that you would here. Um, and we do really look at when we're, when we are, when the last race that we gave you which I think you said it was, th I don't remember the time, but we gave you a substantial increase above and beyond the cost of living um, adjustment. Um, and that was because we knew we were underpaying you. We looked and we, we, we looked at all the other towns in the area that were of similar size and found out that in fact we were paying you less. And so we felt that at that time we did bring up the pay to be um, equivalent to what other towns um, were offering. So I feel like we have done a pretty good job of, you know, 
trying to stay competitive with other towns um, and making sure that you guys are not, you know, that, that you're on par with what other towns are, are making. Now, we are looking for a new person. Mm -hmm. What's the starting rate going to be for them? It'll be based on their experience and qualifications. So, we don't know. But generally, we don't pay new people the highest wage, obviously. Well, that's something to consider. I mean, obviously, you're not going to look at it blocked over, but if you want Middlesex to be the town people want to work for, the pay is going to have to be eventually more than just even with other towns. You're going to have to bump it up and you're going to have to make that benefits package really attractive. I mean, Callis is still trying to find two guys. I, I, it's hard right now. Both of oh no, we know that. The so that's just another way to, we got to look at it um, to get people want to stay working at this town and for a long time and have people knocking at the door for when a uh, vacancy comes up, you know what I mean? So that's just something to consider for the future and to look at this. And that's why the guys wanted to bring it up. They, you know, they do a good job and they work their butts off, so. Um. And, we don't, and we don't disagree with any of that. And I don't, I don't mean to sound uh, mean or hard-hearted in a way. You're not, you're not late, you're early, because you're yeah, well, you the know, first I, ones to come to us about about next year. Yeah, but unfortunately, we didn't really have a say on last year because we didn't have a foreman, and we I thought well, we were going to get more than what we ended up getting. Well, I'm sorry to feel that way. I I thought in my short interim as road commissioner there. I believe, I believe what I said is if you want to be involved in the budget process, you should be involved in the budget process, any of you. So I'm sorry if you didn't, I'm sorry if you didn't understand that or know that. It's always been that way. Now, you know, we're, okay, we're meeting with you tonight. We're happy to meet with you anytime. But, but certainly if you're concerned about your compensation, budget time is the time to do it. So... Um, I understand. I understand everything you're saying, and I also understand what what Shane is uh, what Shane is saying. It's a in a way, it's a good time to be an employee and a a bad time to be an employer because there's definitely a a shortfall and a demand, and yeah, it's potentially it's a problem. Gonna, and the town's going to have the town's going to have to deal with that. And believe me, we know it. I think the town's going to have to start shelling out money just to get somebody to to come in here and and take this job opening that's coming, well, coming up. And, and my thing is, is that you guys are going to have to shell out more money. It's, well, then Jay and I have talked about it. It's, you know, if you're going to shell out more for that person coming in, then we should be compensated too to, so that they're not, and I don't disagree. They're not making the same amount as us. We're not going to pay. You know, we, we can't go out and pay the new person $2 an hour more than you guys are making and expect you to come to work with a smile on your face. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, so, I'm sure that would definitely not happen. Well, <laughs> I, 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 no. I get it. And that's all, that's all part, of the, part of the calculation, you know. And as much as the truth of the matter is, as much as our plan is to continue to have a four-person road crew with a working foreman, if the bottom line is the budget can't support it, the budget can't support it, we might have to go back to three. Who knows? I mean, none, we've had no discussion about any of this. Okay. But I'm just telling you, but obviously it, it's all in the mix. We would like to be part of that discussion if that discussion and does happen. Just, than, just, just, just throwing that out there because... You're, you're welcome to attend any select board meeting anytime. Okay? You can't... Uh, and, and we'll recognize you as, as town employees. If you're a town resident, you have a little different status, but uh, yeah, if you're not, so. you're still a town employee, so uh, yeah. you know, it's appropriate for you to be heard. Okay. That's a lot of board meetings. Okay. I mean, the other, thing, the other thing I would appreciate is any information you have about how people are being paid more, other than the fact that they just tell you they're being paid more, is I'd like to know what their pay and benefits are. Because 
that's what the cost is to the town. So, you know, if for instance you were to say, you know what, we don't, uh, we don't care about personal time, we don't care too much about holiday time, we don't care too much about health insurance, we don't care too much about uniforms or boot allowances, we just want more pay. <laughs> Where'd you say that job opening was at Berlin? Okay, so that would be right in between the ballpark of their high and low, but Berlin, the town pays all insurance, vision, dental, life, disability. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. We're paying it all, too. What's that? We're paying it all, too. Except for the spouse, you don't. We pay 50%. This isn't saying they pay for the spouse, either. Well, that's something they have to look, but they offer... We vision and dental. Of they offer income. vision and dental too. Right. Well, that's an add-on that you know. Right. But we don't know what their plan is, or did that say what their plan? No, is? they didn't list their plan. Yeah. Anymore. So that's where, as Liz was saying, you've got to compare apples to apples. Right. They might be on a completely different plan. The other thing is, we pay HSA, and that doesn't say they pay HSA. And the HSA can pay for vision and dental. You got to be. You got to be very careful when you start comparing these. Oh yeah, I, I agree. Health insurance plans. But I, I just want to, you know, make it clear to you guys that we hear what you're saying, and we have in the past, you know, really, I think, been very thoughtful about the pay that we're giving you, and you know, making it mensurate to what other towns of this similar size are, are making. Um, and, you know, we understand right now COVID has changed a lot for a lot of places, right? Not just towns, but restaurants and all kinds of places are having trouble finding work. And when you have a... Finding people to work. Finding people to work. And when you have a, you know, demand and you don't have a supply, that's when things start to change. And we're not quite there yet, right? We haven't put out the job application yet, you know, we, we are not yet in that position where, or maybe we have, but we're, yeah. not, we're not yet in that position to s suddenly start changing the amount that we're paying in, until we have to, or until we've decided that we have to have the fourth person. And into, into your response, that wouldn't mean that your job becomes, you take on a third of what you know, that person who didn't, that just means the town doesn't have as many services, that we don't get the road graded as many times. We don't get the ditching done twice. We only have it once. Those are the things that a town, when the voters are voting on a budget, if they want something, they'll pay for it. But if they don't want it, they won't pay for it and they won't get it. And so that's the reality. You wouldn't be doing three times more work. During you just wouldn't be getting- During the winter. Well, maybe the roads wouldn't get plowed as much, and that's the repercussion of a town not wanting to pay. But we have to go to the voters to say, listen, we, this is why you need a fourth road person, and this is how much it's gonna cost, and this is gonna be the increase in your taxes because of it. And people have to be willing to say yes. I mean, I know I'm willing to have good roads, but I'm not the only voter. And, 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 it's, our, and it's our duty to present a budget that we think is fair and responsible to our voters and be able to, you know, back it and say why we think this is important. And if you guys come to us and say, this is really important and, you know, that's something we listen to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dorinda, do, do they all have their information, this information not, that you I shared with us? Give, though, I gave it to Shane and Vish, but I did not give it to the employees. Okay. What did you give us? The breakdown of all the, of what the road crew is making. You want this? You want Charles? Charles. We'll share. And I would be, I'm, I'm just thinking of something, Peter. Um, you know, if you were to do, if you were to suddenly decide, oh, I'm gonna pay my road crew $4 more an hour, all the other towns road crew are gonna quit and say, I wanna come work for Middlesex. <laughs> and that's probably not something that road, the towns wanna do to each other. Watch out, we might be engaging in an antitrust violation. <laughs> be careful, all I'm saying is we gotta be careful how right. we say that. Okay, I'm, but, but I'm, certainly, certainly, 
town share share information. It's public information, and we share it, and it's available to all of you too. What? What's our high and low? You list here or the other down high and low. You mean the high and low? What wages? Yes, just plain wages without the wages. Twenty-one sixty-four to twenty-six. And that, of course, doesn't include overtime. No. Right. I that's a big. Just no, no, no. That's right. But all I'm saying is the overtime is a big component of what we pay. And you have total pay. In fact, given a bonus if they didn't get much overtime in one. In one we did. We did that. Yeah. We want to be good, fair employers, but at the same time, we can't give away the ranch. But this is the time, it seems hard to believe because we barely started this fiscal year, but this is the time we start to think about all this stuff for next year. And we seriously start thinking about it in, uh, in October. Does that make, does it, do you have any questions about that? Does it make sense to you? Uh, it doesn't really. I guess what you said is all right with me for the time being. I'm sorry, say that again, sir? I guess it's okay for the time being. I, uh, I guess we just have to become way more involved in our the budget system. We were unaware of that, I guess, or overlooked or misunderstood. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that's the case, but, uh, you know, we're happy to hear. I mean, we're hearing from you now. We'll remember and we'll listen. Um, we're not ignoring you. And uh, I'm going to suggest uh, that we have in the near future probably can't be at our next meeting, but we'll have we'll have an executive session, which is a session where no members of the public are present, um, to discuss what you've had to say to us tonight, just to keep it on the forefront of our mind. At the same time, I would suggest to all of you that if there are a part, any parts of this that you don't understand, let's make sure you understand. And Dorinda or I or Vic or somebody can can go through it with you. But the other thing I would suggest is if there's something that's more important to you than something else on here, and you all agree, changes can be made. You know, transferring, transferring costs from some of these benefits to pure, uh, to pure wages. But we hear you. We want to be competitive. We want to be fair. Uh, and I know no matter what we pay, it never seems like it's enough. I get that. I was an employee a long time myself. I get it. Um, but you need to think about where we sit and the issues that we face every day, too. That's all I'm saying. The only thing I'd like to add is that I think it's been said briefly, but we have tried to make sure your wages have been going up over the past few years and because they were quite low. And, and I personally don't think they're right where they should be myself. But every year we've done something. We haven't left you a year without doing something for a raise, whether it's a 2% two or 3% two or raise or, or a a figure amount, 50 cents or a dollar, we've done something plus the bonus stuff. And like Peter said, uh, this is coming up towards budget time, so Shane and Vic are going to be working on budget shortly. I mean, it's coming right up. So that's the time, and that's when we've always done it. From when I was a road commissioner, when we that's when we went in for the wages. Didn't always get what we asked for, but you always got something. Mm 
Any other questions? Well, thank you for coming. It's good to see you. you. These conversations are never easy. We really do appreciate the work you do on behalf of our town. You're important to us, very important. Uh, and we try and listen carefully to what you have to say. Yes, thank you for your work, you guys. Yes. Thank you. We're free to go. You're free to go. Or you can stay. <laughs> You're also welcome to stay. You can keep that. This, what, you're going to have, you said in the next meeting or, or not, but you didn't say the right, in the future you're going to have a executive session. With I'm going to suggest to the board that we do that. We yeah. haven't decided to do it. Yes. Under what, under what provision of one VSA are you going to hold that executive Personnel. session? Personnel. That's not a provision. I'll get you the statute. Okay. I guess we won't. What's that? We'll have an open, open and freewheeling discussion. There you go. Oh, I was just going to say, ask if I could come, be part of that. But I guess I can be part of it anyways. Well, you would be anyway. You would be. You would be anyway. Because, yeah. No, this is this is important, and uh, you know, I feel like I feel like. To a certain extent, this is a recurring uh, conversation, but we have responded to these conversations in the past with various well, I think various measures, and I think we are. I think Shane's exactly right. We're going to be we're going to be challenged uh, hiring a new member of the road crew. Yeah, I mean, you might hire them for what you're paying these guys now. Correct, and that's going to cause hard feelings. Yeah, we're kind of bunched together right now. I mean, is, are you aware of what people make? Yeah. Each one? Yeah. Okay. Says it right here. Okay. You know, as, speaking as a, as a former employer and not with a town, I can tell you we struggle with these problems all the time, especially in tight employment times. You're trying to hire the best person you can hire. And guess what? They get more vacation than any of your current employees do, and they maybe get higher wages. So what the hell do you do? <laughs> you better be careful. I can tell. I can tell you that. You want to cause wholesale unrest? Start start making decisions to pay the new people more, and you're going to be in trouble. All right. The worst thing you can have as a business, or probably even here, is to have uh, uh, unrest in uh, in your uh, employee pay because they right. will take more time. I mean, I knew with the state, you know, something would come up and they'd spend more time talking about it. You know, I mean, it, it, it got so, it took a lot of time well, but amongst the employees. You know, we, we've done some work and we'll do some more work and, and you guys can help us do this work. But uh, when we've looked at this really carefully in the past, this is just, just a, a snapshot um done in the last few days in preparation for this meeting but we literally the last time we really looked at this that was a couple of years ago we went around to all the towns and got their you know got their real information and the details on their health insurance and and everything else and and we went through it and at that time uh as steve said we we came to understand that we were low and we made uh we made it a good adjustment i can't remember what it was but um and the, the time may be that we need to do that again. Based on what I've seen so far, I don't think that's necessarily true, but we've got to see. And certainly, the other issue we face, which didn't come up this evening, is you know, we know that private contractors pay substantially more than this as wages. Do they offer the same benefits? Probably not. No, most of them, no. Probably not. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, if you want to drive truck for a for an excavation contractor who works seven or eight months out of the year, you can earn a lot more on an hourly basis, no doubt. But you probably would not have these benefits and not have the sure employment. I mean, in that world, if the work stops, the jobs stop. That's not the case here. So, right. and I think the guys know that. They do know that. I know they know that. And I remember we looked at the health insurance 
as well. And at one point we thought, well, we could go with a cheaper plan, but then the guys would have to pull it out of pocket. And we just knew that wasn't fair. Like we didn't want to say, oh, you know, we can have a cheaper plan for you. And I, I don't think that's what we want to do, even in the future. Like, I don't think we want to take a piece of that benefit and give it to you in your hourly rate and then expect you to be setting that money aside for your health emergency, right? That's not going to happen. Right. Yeah. Um, so we want to be, you know, um, we want to be mindful of if we are going to pull something from a benefit. Like, I don't want you pulling from your retirement. No. You guys need your retirement, no. right? Like, there's very little you could, like, pull it from. That would really do probably have to come from the budget, and it would have to be a budget increase. I don't want to get rid of the benefits that we have, that we give you. I think they're no, good benefits. No, that would make it tougher. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, you know, I, having been through this, and then we'll, we'll stop this for tonight, but having been through this many times over the years in many different capacities, right. employees underappreciate their benefits. You know, they may expect them, they may think it's just, you know, automatically included, but they don't understand the true cost of it. No, they look at the dollar. Sure, they look at what's in their paycheck. I, I get it. Um, but the only really fair way to look at it is to look at the total, uh, yeah, is total to look package. at the total cost. And to compare it, compare it that way. Yeah. You know, and I know these guys, you know, they, they talk to people on other road crews. They, oh, you know, what, are you, what did you get for a raise? What do you make? Blah, 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 blah. I mean, that's, that's normal. That's not a problem. But it's not documentation that we're uncompetitive. Or it's not adequate, adequate for me to go based on that. Right. But that said, this is a good warning shot across our bow. And... Uh, <laughs> Budget time is budget time is coming. All right. Good enough. And you definitely won't get it if you don't ask for it. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Um, other road. highway department updates. Victor, or Shane. Um, they're working on Baldock Road and going to go to Portal Road, ditching, putting in culverts. Got three in so far. Well, the first one was a challenge. Um, trying to learn the traffic patterns of Bulldock Road. <laughs> first one was on a hill and a corner. That was a little bit of a challenge. You only could do half at a time. So yeah, that's my first time doing a culvert that way. So it was all right though. Their big tractor trailers don't come until nine o'clock. Oh, so right. that gives so six o'clock in the morning we're digging. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how we did. So we've got three chains so far. Which stop? Uh, and then the graders getting it. It's bad. Jay actually used it today. Yep. He graded the lower part of uh, Bulldog off from Route 12 just to smooth up where we've been ditching and tried the walk and roll. And he liked it. He said did a good job. Well, did we get it? Yeah, just a oh. lot more to turn it around. So you got to pick and choose your spots. But yeah, yeah it's packed it pretty good. Because right? we didn't chloride it. We were ditching still, and he just wanted to try it out smooth the road up and it packed it pretty well. I was pretty nice. impressed. So you put a little chloride on that and I think we'll be. We yeah, have a make sure you do that on Liz's road just before it rains. So you can yeah, that'd be yeah, nice. The bottom part of it. <laughs> That's pretty bad, the bottom part. It, he's going to touch that up tomorrow. Oh, good. I don't want him to do a deep grading, but that would just put on there to get some fresh material on it. And it well, people really slow down. Already. He's going to have to use to that roll too. Yeah, I'm sure the creator steers differently and everything else probably with that when that thing's down. It does it when it's up, it steers different. When it's down, it doesn't. The weight it pushes down so it picks the back end up. Oh, so you the, get more weight you on the front tires. Yeah, yeah, when your, you yeah. picks it up, he said steering's a little feels like you're on ice. Because the rear what wheels are raised, they're not. Yeah, you, you pick that whole thing right up off. Oh, the, ground. the whole grader. Mm. Nice. So and 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 but I noticed like tonight over by Julio's that's that's held quite a bit where they go from the blacktop to the mm -hmm. from the gravel but because he put a lot of uh, chloride on that. Where's that? Oh, Julio is the guy. What is the chloride? How does that help? Come from the garage. Where come from the garage and, and on the blacktop puts, ends right there. Puts moisture oh, okay. in there. Yeah. So oh, it, it down. Oh, it down. Oh, it down. Not only does it keep the dust down, but it makes the road. Oh. 
Close it up better as it well. Makes it a little bit of water and it activates it better. Um, we have we added a water tank to the fire truck or the old fire truck. Um, to the town truck. Yeah. <laughs> That way, it can lay water down ahead of the chloride because it helps activate the chloride, yeah. and the roads will pack better. And I'm talking about the trucks. Yeah. Uh, so one of the select board meetings coming up right off, we need to go over trucks. Um, yeah. The western side is due next July. Yeah. We order it within the next few weeks, and you might have it by July or October, roughly. So. It's going to have to be ordered right off. Yep. So I'm starting to get a year quotes. Yeah. It's going to take a year. To it's get a it done. year turnaround plus. Um, and uh, Clark salesman told me they were just told by International no orders, but Clark had ordered 15 trucks for themselves. So if we decide to go that route, we can take one of their trucks and have it built the way we want it. That's the only way we'd be able to get an international right now. I'm waiting on Mac. I've got quotes from Kenworth International, and the guy was supposed to mail me a quote here for the Mac. So I'm waiting on that. And Jay still would like me to get a quote on a Western Star. He likes the Western Star. I think any truck you go with, all these guys I had them include a seven year warranty on it. Yeah. Um, I said I think it would just be crazy not to with all the electronics, the DEF system, and it, it just causes a lot of havoc. Well, we'll have enough money in it so you can have the real touch of truck this time. Yay. <laughs> the other thing is the question came up, and maybe it's a little bit early, but you could think about it, is uh, our, our chloride water truck is in pretty poor shape. I think we can get it uh, inspected. Yeah, I don't think it's So there was some talk about <clears throat> because we got so much money in that Western Star. Western Star. Maybe not trade that in and make that our water truck. I mean, it's just a thought. It's so a, what's what's the what's the problem with the current truck? It's the frame. The the rust. Yeah, uh, yeah but I mean, it's the, it's the, the frame. frame. It's the spring shackles, the springs. Yeah. Um, the frame's actually not terrible. It's everything else that's going. We just had to replace brakes on it because the brakes were all shot. Yeah. Um, but it, it, I mean, it's not inspectable. I don't believe. I mean, you could try to get inspected, but I don't. Even, it's not registered. It hasn't been registered since I've been here. Really? And you just drive it around town? Wait, I just started. They said they haven't. I don't know when the last time it was registered. We have to look it up. A good deal on that. So far. But. How do you turn the Western Star into a? Um, you take, oh, the, you it, take the dump body off. Or you could leave the. Well, leave yeah. Or put off. the tanks in the dump body. You can put the tanks in the dump body, and you could counter it so it was a spare truck in the winter too. If you ever had a truck go down, that'd be another option. But that's if, I mean, they're offering us trades right now anywhere from 55 to 65,000 on it. But that's tentatively, no. they, they have the right, all these guys that are quoting it have the right to reappraise it next fall when the truck comes in. Sure. That's so, true. which is understandable. So, yeah. um, now you have, I don't know how many thousands of dollars, you have 30,000 just in a transmission. Um, almost ten. Well, this is a you know we've. <laughs> so yeah, this 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 again feels like a recurring conversation, and you you know what the problem is. The problem is we say, okay, we're going to turn the Western Star into our truck. Then then we're maintaining, maintaining that right. truck again, and it loses an engine or transmission. I mean the idea the idea with that fire truck was, you know, if all we're using it for is chloriding the roads, that's very little use now. I never knew it wasn't uh, wasn't registered or inspected. I think that's probably a mistake. I don't well, know what It also sits out in the weather all year. It sits out in the snow all winter. No, no, I understand. So, um, I mean, that's another problem. You have equipment sitting in the snow instead of inside, which is hard, obviously. You can't. Well, <laughs> that's, what, that's what Liz's committee is going to tell us, the new quadruple-sized town garage that we need, right? <laughs> And all I'm so all anyway. I'm all I'm saying is the, the concept right. of using that fire truck was just doesn't get used very much. 
If heaven forbid it was to die completely, could we put those tanks in one of the other trucks and still chloride the roads? Yes, we could. So, you know, I know that isn't the most convenient thing to do, but no, it can but certainly be done. We just figured we'd throw that option out there if that's yeah. a direction you want but to we go, should, but you have a year to think about right. it for more no. anyway, so. But I have to believe, and maybe, I'm, and maybe I'm wrong, who knows, the market for used trucks is just crazy. I just bought a pickup truck. I've never been through right. such a, such a fiasco in my life to buy a three quarter ton pickup truck. But anyway, that's that's a whole other story for another time over yeah. a beer or something. But uh, if a trade in is fifty five or sixty five thousand dollars, we could surely buy a truck that would carry those chloride tanks for a lot less money than that. So that makes that a pretty expensive truck in my in my view. But that's just right. off the top of the head without looking at numbers and and thinking about it. Well, he um, said something that gets closer, maybe we look at it. I mean, this one's running for now. It's got an oil leak. I think it needs a new oil pan, but we're using it for now anyway. So yep. by next year, I don't know what shape it'll be in, but we can address it anyway we, when the time comes. So I'm asking a, a question, and I don't know the answer to this question, but in the old days, for a truck to be covered for insurance, it had to be registered and inspected if you used it on the road. So if that's, I don't know how we find out the answer to that without getting ourselves in trouble. Yeah, but exactly. If that's, if that's the case, we shouldn't be using that truck right now. We're putting ourselves at severe risk if something were to happen. Um, I don't know if we can. Well, the only other thing we could do for right now would be take the uh, hydro seeder out and fill the chloride tank in there, you just wouldn't have the water tank in, which would be fine. We just mix the chloride with water. Uh, we could just throw it on the freight liner for now. That'd so, how would we? And I'm just thinking out loud. I'm a little reluctant to call up the League of Cities and Towns and ask them that question. Because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure what the answer would be. Uh, I'm just sticking out the top of my head, you know. Uh, and maybe it is registered. I don't know. I don't think there's a plate on it, but most things get registered for five years, I believe, on the municipal. Yeah, I'll look, because I that. think I would have the insurance card for that. Yeah, they're all I know it's insurance. Yeah, so it's definitely it's insurance on the schedule. So, so, but whether there's an exclusion in the policy where it's on the policy, but it's not covered because it's not registered and not inspected. Right. I don't know the answer to that one. Town of Middlesex on their roads. Does the town of Middlesex own their roads? I believe the answer is we own some of the roads, but not all of them. Because like, and I know we went through this went through this a while back when we were looking at that old ancient road thing. Yeah. Um, I'm just talking but a lot of a lot of deeds a lot of deeds and I'm not sure what my deed says to tell you the truth, but a lot of deeds say you own to the center of the road. And the town has a right of way, but I believe there are also roads that we own where the deeds yep. say they're to the edge of the right of way. Yep. I think you're correct. Um, but yep. which ones and where and how? That's like, you know, it's kind of a new kind of a, It's like, you know, when a, one of the, the state of Vermont puts out a, they own the road. Yeah. When they put out a contract, you're not. As long as you don't leave that highway, you don't have to have that your vehicles registered inside that. As long as the contract's gone, yeah, that, that would not that would not help us. I don't think. Might. Well, oh. if we're lucky enough to have it happen in a place where that was the case that we owned the road. Right. But I think I think most of the deeds, and I don't know if you know the answer to that, Mary. Or, I don't know the answer to that. Um, or Sarah, do you have any? Um, well, there's been a late, uh, there's been a movement by surveyors recently to uh, say that roads are owned up to the, up to the, the to say that the homeowner does not own to the center of the, of the road. And so this is just something that actually surveyors have just started doing without any legal reason to do it. So it's caused problems, actually. Um, it's really deed dependent. I have not seen anywhere where the town actually owns a road. I have seen where the state of Vermont owns road. Right. I think I think the case would be, you know, we've never really 
we've never really studied that, but I, I know when we looked at it, we found deeds which said to the edge of the town right away. And how many though were that we found? And some of them go to the center of the road. And then a lot of them go to the center of the road. Right? The idea the behind that is the older logical ones, because the town just continued to road. You don't want these little strips of land, which actually we have right now on Center Road. Oh, we have little strips of state-owned land along Center Road that no one knows what to do with. So the idea is that the town has a right-of-way, but if the right-of-way is ever discontinued, then it the reverts to the property. Yeah, right. That doesn't answer the question about our no, it doesn't. potentially unregistered truck. <laughs> I'm not so I'm not so worried about an uninspected truck as I am an unregistered truck. So can we look into that and see if in fact it is yeah. registered? I'll look into it tomorrow and see if I can find out. It was actually been registered for the last inspection. So if it was inspected last year, would have just ran out. Yes. Yeah. That would be a good question. Okay. Well, if you'd look into that, and then I can figure out some way to. Some way to get the answer to that. Uh, I can do it by tomorrow. I just need to have the, the I just need to have a town number and then I can go into the DMV. But I just can't do it right now. Okay. Well, let's let's find out the answer to that. Right. Um, the other thing, and this is a little bit of a violation of our agenda, but assuming everybody agrees, why don't we talk about the throwing up of those roads while you guys are here? Um, Dolan. It is a class four. Yep. Wait a second. How yep. many roads are we talking about? Two roads. Two. We amended the agenda, Mary, to include a discussion of Colby Road and Dolan Road. When I was out with Ashley Andrews, she was taking pictures of the connected segments on Bulldog. Yep. Dolan Road has a high risk connected segment, and if it stays class four, we have to fix that up to the state standards. So, it needs, a, it needs a lot of work. I took a walk up through there and there's one boulder, I think without exaggerating, it's three and a half, four feet tall. That's how far the roads wash down. Yeah. So, do you throw it up into a legal trail instead of, because she said we could do that. Um, but if you want to fix it up, it's going to cost some money. Who, who, who's she? Ashley Andrews. Who's for the state. So this is to comply with the state be, wastewater standards. Is it still standards. a town? That's what we're talking about. Like it's a public right of way. Yeah, it'd be a town trail like some of the other trails you have, legal trails. Are there any residences on that? Well, we don't plow it now, but as soon as you turn on it, there's three, two houses, three houses right there. Right there. Three driveways as soon as well, you turn on it, and then after that, okay. there's nothing to the top, and we turn around on the other end at that house at the top. There's a house, but no one lives in it. At the top of there. No, nope, it's on the. You get to it from the Culver Hill side. Isn't it? You just can't drive up it. You used to be able to drive up it. It used to be that yeah. good enough to drive, but now you can't even drive. But up would it. it affect the three at the bottom where you turn on? No. Nope. No. Nope. Um, I don't see why we wouldn't want to. The only thing that. Um, I mean, I guess it doesn't really. I can't imagine this happening, but it's so washed out. Like, could there be like a flooding? Concern, you know, in terms of, um, you know, damaging something below, right? Well, right the good news about it's washed, mm -hmm. it's going into the culvert. It, right, Luckily. I mean, it, and well, that's the thing. It's like, if so, you wouldn't manage that culvert that's. Is there a culvert right at the bottom next yeah, to the There is, the, and the I tillis, believe it goes house. underneath the driveway that's there that goes up to a house. Yeah. I do believe. I mean, that would be my concern is that because it really is, it's like a hiking trail now. It's, yeah. You can't even drive up it. No, but it could still be used as a hiking trail if it was a trail. And no, I'm just talking about like if there's something weird with drainage and running yeah, that causes I, damage to everybody else's. Right. I'll, just, I'll just finish my thought. So if it's a trail, we can put water bars across it. We can do whatever we need to do to divert the water, which we can't do when it's a road. Okay. So we can we can mitigate that that problem and still have it be a, a trail and we can have the least sharp mountain bike mountain bike ramp on one side. <laughs> well, we just with remember when the leaves. Plaque. Well, then we had a problem too with the neighbor putting leaves in the. Um, yeah, in the ditch. Could she do that if it were a trail? Oh, no, sir. 
It's a trail. Right. I mean, she literally removed every leaf from her woods <laughs> and put them in the I remember that road. last year. Anyway, that's, that's a good one. Um, the, cons road. the concern I have about Colby Road is that that property has just been purchased. Oh, and nice. to me, to throw it up only to have them come back to us and say, hey, want the, we want that reinstated as a town road. I mean, the question I'm asking everybody to think about is, does it make sense to wait a little bit and see what the proposal is for well, the use of that land? I would mm -hmm. say also there's a question of notice of throwing it up without letting the new owners know about it. Well, Mary, well, we, well, would have to go through, we would have to go okay. through the whole process. So no, no, well, you, but there was a reason before. why we didn't include Colby when we did the last time. It had something to do with... There was a with, resident out there. No, that's not why. It was something else. <laughs> I don't know whether we were thinking it was going to be sold. I don't know. I, I, I mean, to me, it just feels premature when the property has just yes. changed hands to immediately throw the road up. But we haven't been plowing it for the last few years, and we certainly haven't been doing much to maintain it. So it's not like we're, uh, we're expending money on it. And it would just seem... It's just a big process to change the way these roads are, public hearings and all that kind of stuff. And to do it one way and a year later have to turn around and consider flipping it back, I think it would be a mistake. So if a new owner wants you to plow that road all winter long, we plow it? We plow it. Yep. Do we um, know whether they're going to actually be on the property or they're going to... Do we, we don't. I, have no knowledge, I have no knowledge of what their plans are, Mary. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out as a thought that doesn't make sense to do it at this point in time. But... Well, you know, maybe we maybe we go ahead and throw it up and well, whatever all, happens happens. All, there, with the process that we have to go through, and all the landowners are notified anyway, they would have a, a point in time right then to come to us, rather than us just waiting for them to do something. I, I would say that we should at least start that process, and if the owners don't object to it, fine. If, but if they do and they have reasons, then fine, we listen to them. If they, but that's, if we, that's fine that too. Be my that's fine too. That's fine too. Let's assume they don't know um, because we don't give them. Somehow they don't know. If they want to then reinstate it to a class four, don't they have to bring it up to our standards if we throw it up? Well, we're not if talking they, we about. We're talking about. It? I believe we're talking about downgrading it to class four, right? Right. Right now oh, it's yeah. class three. Okay. Yes. Would, but if they wanted to be class three, wouldn't they have to bring it up to our standards? That's an option. Hold on. When we threw up the other roads, we turned them into their private driveways. Yes. We so did, the, except for Reine Keys Road. We turned that We didn't maintain class them as trails. We totally threw them up. We threw them up completely, so, except for Reine except, So, Knapp Road, which had been class three, you downgraded, downgraded to class four. Right. Uh, Bolduc, you completely discontinued. Merritt, right. you completely discontinued. Right. Key, because of that, uh, because of that, Giant Warren Road was you downgraded it to Class yes. Four, so they still didn't have to plow it. And then Chase, the end of Chase Road, you completely discontinued yes. the end of Chase Road because that was going yes. straight up to yeah. a house. Yeah. Do you guys want me to help? Do you want me to put this on the next agenda, or how do you want? How fast do you want to proceed on this? So well, let's put it, let's put it on the next agenda. That'll give Start us all the whole a little process. time, to, time yeah. to think about it, and we can decide if we're okay. going to go forward or not. Okay. Perfect. Unless anybody disagrees. Yeah. No, I, think no. it's I mean, we can't take action tonight anyway. No. So. Did it, how many acres was that? A lot. The Colby. Oh, Colby. Yeah. I mean, are they planning on developing it? Looks like it. I know. Who bought yeah, it? Wasn't Do we it know? Wasn't it 180-something or yeah. was it 2-something? I, I was thinking it would be really good for housing. Two, two lots of housing. I think it was close to 3. That's what I wondered if they bought yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Close to 300. And then we could keep it to be a public road, and then that encourages people to come move to Middlesex. Yeah. If he's doing it for development and he's going to build some big apartments and stuff for people. I mean, we have no idea what his plans are, but I can't, right. I can't believe somebody would buy that. I don't think it's going to be turned back into a dairy farm. Let's put it that way. No. So do we know who bought it though? Yes. Who is it? Sarah. Is it a secret? It is Robert Napier Revocable Trust of St. Petersburg, Florida. It's 226 acres. He's going to develop it. Yeah. Well, there's some cheap land for some low income houses. That's what I said too. That's what I think it should be. And I think we ought to go up where uh, Ruth Holt lives there on Jenny Jenkins Road. And, right? and connect it? Connect it. 
it was. Well, we didn't well, throw it. Could, could be connected. Could be connected. We, yeah, we, no, we, we, we maintained we, it as a trail. Yeah, yeah. right. We, it was class four. That, we that's right. We turned that into a trail. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> agenda. I'm just yep. worried about the agenda. We have okay. okay. Moving right along. Oh, yeah. Can I ask a quick question while the highway crew is here? I don't know if it's relevant or not, but I w I'm still sitting on a Lafayette check and a new invoice. And I need guidance on how to proceed. Good question. Is that the stop signs? I mean, That's the, this the, is speed, the speed signs. Speed, the speed signs. signs. So their point is they had to move it. So, I mean, I think they should have at least given us a break on it. But they, they, they're claiming the state's at fault because the state guy told them to go ahead and do it. So I contacted. Maybe we should build a state. I contacted that Jim Coda from the state a while ago and asked him about it. And it was one of his employees that told Lafayette that. And he was going to talk to him and get back to me, and I haven't heard back from him. So. I bet you never will either. <laughs> no, I don't know. Unless you can't read on it. How big is the bill? It's a lot. Uh, the new one is 2462 dollars. That was to move it. That was to move it. Yeah. But we haven't paid. We haven't paid for. The I still haven't mailed off because you told me not to right, mail it correct. until we resolved everything. Well, what's the total if we paid it all? If you paid it all, the first bill was four thousand eight hundred and sixty-six dollars and ten cents, and the second one is two thousand four hundred and sixty-two dollars even. So around fourteen, fifteen thousand. No, no, no. It's about seven, four, um, five, six, a little over seven thousand. I mean, almost the cost of the signs. Well, yeah, but if you add the cost of the oh, signs, yes. oh, right, yeah, yeah. you add in the cost of the signs. Who could we bill at the state? Hmm? Do you have some people we could just send the bill to and see if they'll pay it? <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> no, I think I think he's got the right idea to call Mr. Coda. To what? To call Jim Coda from the state, the guy that. Uh, yeah, but he's hasn't gotten back to him with a phone call already. He hasn't. Well, certainly we should follow up. I mean, if. if if the sign company relied on what the state told them and they did it the way the state told them to do it, uh, I think we need to pay the bill. Yeah, I think we need. Well, to I think pay we should pay. I mean, I we, we use these this subcontractor or contractor for other yeah, pay it. things. Then. No, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're talking about two invoices. So I I think we should go ahead and pay the first invoice. Me too. I mean, they they installed it. We ended up not understanding how much it was going to cost to install it, so we ended up only what. Voting four or five thousand dollars, and we spent a lot more than that. You but whatever, we should pay that. We should pay well, that bill. The first one is only forty-eight hundred. And hold right. out, but that doesn't include the cost of the signs. But right. I'm not sure why we would hold out. They did the work. We ha they had to happen. It's that they we, the installed the signs in an incorrect place. But they were and they're told. they were told by the state, but that's not our fault. And they don't have any documentation that they were. It was just a conversation. You know, they don't have a change order or a, I don't know what the proper paperwork would be, but my understanding is there's no paperwork. Is that correct, Shane, as far as yeah, you know? as far as I know. But they relied on the state of Vermont. That's, that's their that's problem. That's their problem, yeah. I mean, I don't see why we should be responsible for that. I really don't. No, I agree with you. I didn't look at it that way. I mean, the original, the original thing, so... Right. I would I would recommend and I'd like to have it a motion so it's in the minutes for for Garinda that we pay the original uh, that we pay that original invoice. Mm -hmm. I, move, that check. I, I move that the town of Middlesex pay the outstanding first invoice to Lafayette. What's the rest of the name, Dorinda? Lafayette Highway Specialties. Highway Specialties in the approximate amount of forty eight hundred dollars. Is there a second? Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? How much did the signs cost? Seven. Almost eight. No. Almost eight. eight. Whoa, we really underestimated that. And did they do the signs too? No, we bought the signs. We, bought the signs. we knew the signs were going to be a, we budgeted 8000 for the signs. Even we though never we budgeted anything we thought for that our installation. Right. 
Wow, we really underestimate So what is that what is Lafayette's position? That it's not their fault and we should pay the bill? Is that, is that what they're saying? They're, they did the work. We should pay the, for their work. I don't know if I can get them to cut the bill, work with us a little bit on it. I don't know. Um, I mean, I can try. His deal is that they should get paid because the state's the one that told them to do it. That it was all right to move it in the first place. Did they, did they, were they the ones who, who prepared the signs for us in the first instance? Yes. So they've already gotten 15,000 bucks, right? No, 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 no. no, no. We bought the signs, Mary. Oh, we, but they, that we, we paid them to install them in the first place. Okay, so where did we buy the signs from? Uh, uh, tap uh, no. okay. them. We, right. we bought Another. the signs from Somewhere the third else. party. Somewhere yeah. else. Right. Yeah, I haven't looked at them yet, but I will. I think you should, I think we should check with, uh, the state code up. I agree. I would. I would. I would just call him and say, "Hey, I whatever happened, we need to know. We're getting pressure to pay the bill, and we don't think we should have to pay it." And but you know, now they've been moved. So what would the, the state be the one to yeah, pay, the pay, the pay the bill? Is that what you're saying? Or or if the state says no, we never told them that. Then I'd say Lafayette is the one to pay the bill. I just don't see why we should pay it. It's right. not our mistake. Me too. I was in business all those years when I made a mistake. I had to eat it. But maybe, maybe others disagree. It sounds like you disagree, Steve. I just well, two thousand bucks is uh, goodwill. It, it well, sure is. I, I mean, it's we. When's the next time they're not going to come to us and need help? I'm sure the next time we have Gary will put up, it'll cost us two thousand bucks more. <laughs> So what you're saying is what you're saying is they've got us over a barrel and we should just suck it up That's and pay it and don't cry. If don't we cry can't, much. if we can't, we'll we'll talk to 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 uh, to Mr. Coda and say, hey, look, you know, what's, what's the issue here? Yeah. And um, can you help us out? I mean, yeah. And I guess the other thing, the other thing I would propose for the board to think about is my first position would be, we'll split it with you, 50-50. We'll pay half, you pay half. I'm sort of half. See oh, what the they state. have to say about that. No, Maybe I don't mean the state. state. I mean Lafayette. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm sort of half. Because I don't think I don't think the uh, I don't think the state's going to do anything to help us out. I don't think they can. I don't think they have the funds. They don't. No, they haven't budgeted for them. They're all going to so. laugh in our faces. <laughs> well, well, maybe we try. don't. I mean, I, I, if that's if that. I mean, I guess the question is. Give discretionary funds somewhere. Is the state willing to say to us, yes, our employee told them that in error, then I guess you go back to Lafayette and there's nothing we can do about it. We're sorry, but you know, that's it. Then we go back to Lafayette and say, there's only one person you can call. The governor, the governor, director, and gamble. That's the one to call. What do you mean director? The head cheese. The director of, uh, of uh, the Agency of Transportation and Construction, where these people come out. Yeah. If you want. What's the name of the and somebody? And Gamma. Gamma. Well, direct your road foreman to do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's I don't think that's a, a fruitful use of our time. We need to. We definitely. I mean. Whether or not we need Lafayette on our side, and probably we do, we certainly need the state of Vermont on our side, and they got a lot bigger fish to fry than our two thousand dollar sign vote. Yeah. So I guess what I would do here, here's what I think. And how does this sound for for the next step in this process? Um, we try and get the state to verify that in fact they approved where the sign went the first time. All right. And if Lafayette installed it where the state told them to install it, even though it was wrong, um, then maybe we negotiate with Lafayette and maybe we don't. But if the state says, hell no, we never told them that was okay, then that's a little different scenario for me if they just went ahead on their own and installed it there, which I don't think is what happened. But does that make sense to you, Victor? Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then, then we'll decide. I mean, you know, it's not all the money in the world, but but we we fought over less before, right. and uh, we've had to we've had to give on things where we made mistakes. So yeah. it's worth a try. Yeah. 
If I was at Lafayette, I'd think half was pretty good pay, everything considered for that. And that's probably most of their cost or a good portion of their cost to do it. So, does that make sense? You okay with that, Steve? Mary? Yep. Yeah. Liz? Mm hmm. Okay. So let's revisit this and put it on the uh, agenda for our next board meeting. Sarah, okay, so we don't forget. Um, Brenda, can you be quick? You want to no, your... let's skip over because you've got the 525 one and the 545. So right, I that's what I was. We come back. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So, gentlemen, good evening. Hi. How are you? Beautiful day in Middlesex. Yes, you good with me? <laughs> yes. Bye. We are. Thank you very much. Thank you. you guys have a great evening. Oh yes. So, so you want an update of what we put? Yes, please. Okay, that would be great. So, um, as of this morning, it hasn't changed so far. We're at a total of 33 calls. Uh, we had 11 for July and this far in August. Uh, so, just those calls were a hazard spill up on 89 because uh, a, a uh, trash truck blew an engine. Subsequently, blew a whole bunch of oil up there. Car rollover in Moortown, which that's mutual aid out. Uh, two car accident on 89. Uh, vehicle in the median that nothing was found and we were canceled by VSP before we get out. Um, alarm activation, false alarm. A, um, an accident, somebody, whether they intended to come off exit 9 or not, on the northbound they did and they went off the ramp and uh, ended up up on the hill. Um, car versus tractor trailer unit that the woman was lucky she survived. She removed two of, she busted the front of three axles off the trailer, dismounted two of the external tires that went from the northbound to the southbound. And it was in a RAV4 that had no front end left to it, but the, the passenger compartment was intact. So she was very lucky. Uh, we had a CO detector activation, was the false alarm. <clears throat> we were responding Capital West on their own accord called Waterbury. We didn't request them. So Waterbury showed up. Um, so that's technically that's mutual aid in, but we didn't request them. So, uh, And then Sunday, last Sunday, not this past, uh, that multi-car accident on 89, we got called to was actually in Waterbury. It was a mile inside of Waterbury, but they called us instead of Waterbury, so we responded. Um, and that was a bit of a mess. I was on an airplane coming back from Wyoming. Um, as far as uh, some stuff that's going on in the department, we have changed our stipend pay. We're now at uh, ten dollars per call per hour or part thereof for a call. Uh, Twenty dollars for training. Ten dollars for business meeting. $15 for work night, which all works out to be about $10 an hour. Um, and fast squads will remain at $10 per call, no matter how long. Um, two members have been voted on. I don't know if that was right before you guys came down last month or right after, but anyway, we had two new members on. One of those works in the town and can respond during the day. We have another uh, new applic applicant who lives about two miles from the station. He lives in Moortown, but he's a lot closer than I am. Um, <clears throat> this past Sunday, we had our training, uh, multi-town. The uh, towns that were invited <clears throat> were um, Berlin, Montpelier, Moortown, Waitsfield, Waterbury, and Worcester. Uh, Waitsfield, Waterbury, and Worcester showed up. Um, <clears throat> and I knew Montpelier probably wasn't going to be able to show up because they're way short on personnel. And uh, what we did is energize the hydrant system. We used our engine to charge the hydrant system, then used the top hydrant as a water fill and did tanker, uh, tanker runs and set up the pond with, our, with engine one down at the bottom and then we sprayed everything back into the pond so we didn't drain the pond. Um, <clears throat> we learned a couple of new things, how to set up two ponds together and run a pipe between them so you can have two trucks filling it at the, simultaneously. Um, 
Once so, we, uh, excuse me, Jeff. When you say pond, you mean those, I call them swimming pools, but those portable yeah, tanks. Yeah, portable tanks. Set up. Yeah. Um, so with those two tanks, we have 35, a maximum 3,500 gallon capability in those ponds, 1,000 thousand gallons in our engine. So that gives you a lot of play. And we had four hoses out running at the same time, which would be about what a structure fire would be. And once we threw our tanker in, which was the fourth tanker, we never ran out of water with throwing that much water. So it gives us wow. an idea of how many tankers we need to have on scene, of course, depending on how far away the water source is. But the, the big thing was that the, all the towns that were there, we worked well together, we learned from each other. Everybody was excited about the opportunity of the training and was looking forward to doing more training together. Right. Uh, so that, that turned out really well. I, I was very pleased, as I think uh, Doug and Eric were, um, and the other chiefs from the other towns were, were pleased as well. Um, even we didn't even burn the hamburger, the hot dogs. Uh, <laughs> some a little well done. No, yeah, some people like that. Uh, we have a gas meter that's out for repair. Um, we went to to test it the work night last month, and it came up with a code that <clears throat> even the company hadn't seen. So they're trying to figure out what's wrong with it. Um, and a chainsaw's out for repair. Okay. Um, so what is, the, what is the gas meter, I'm sorry? That measures, what we primarily use it for is carbon monoxide, but it also oxygen, um, hydrogen sulfide, and uh, low, expo low level explosives. Okay. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from them. The fix they gave me didn't work, so I dropped that off on Thursday, and, and I should be hearing back hopefully tomorrow um, as to what the status is whether or not we're going to have to buy a new one. If we have to buy a new one, uh, the bandstand concert last week or the week before, um, uh, they raised uh, $499 for us. Great. So if uh, need be, we just have that, we could put that into a new gas meter. What we'd like to do is put that into an additional gas meter so we have three, uh, and eventually we'd like to get more with the, the end goal to having the CO detectors for everybody. Um, so that, and those, the single gas meter, all it does is it, it goes off. The gas meters that we currently have tell the level. So uh, we can walk into a building and it may not be high enough to set the alarm off, but it'll let us know there's some there or Something going on. the alarm's going off and we walk in and it's zero. And these things are so sensitive that you can stand at the door and and as soon as you stick your arm in, it's going to show. Yeah. Uh, and it tells, that's the ones that you just hang on you or tell you, you set it at a level to, for it to start going off. Um, so that's, that's eventually we'd like to get to that point. But for right now, we're, we've got two, we hope to get uh, three and then four, and then we'll work from there. But yep. kind of How much did each of those cost? The little ones, um, I think Worcester said they were like $135. Oh. Not that expensive. No, the, the, the four gas meters are, I think they're up to 625 right now. Yep. Um, so it's, and depending on what stuff you get with it. Um, yep. We have one that, both of them are lithium batteries in them, and we have the capability, to, if those were to die on scene, we could pop those out, pop AAA. Pop regular and, batteries in. Yep. Um, so, and then you have the recharger for that too. So. And a bottle of gas is like 180 bucks, and those last about two. Years. Those we don't use them up in two years, but their life cycle is about two years yep. before the oxygen gets bad. Yep. yep. Um, any uh, any updates or concerns with any of the major equipment trucks? Nothing. That's everything seems to be running. Good news. Yeah. Um, Engine one doesn't seem to have its problem. It, that seems to have been resolved last year. Uh, tanker's running fine. Engine six is running like a trooper. Right. That, that thing can, can put some water. And that's what we were using to charge. So the hydrant system, if you're unaware, has an eight inch line underneath. So it goes from the pond all the way up to the top of the parking lot. And I think that's somewhere around uh, a 40 foot elevation, approximately. Um, so you're pushing that much water out in an eight inch line up and then filling up a truck. And we, we started doing two tankers at once and that kind of bogged it down. 
So we switched to doing one tanker at a time, but the second tanker would be hooked up. So as soon as number one gets filled, that shut off, number two gets started. And that seemed to, the flow seemed to work really well. Do you well. keep them loaded or do you keep them unloaded? Then the, when you get a call, you fill them up. No, the tankers are full. Yeah, it's full. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just filling. And the other thing we, we discussed with the other towns is you get to a scene, whether it's a one tank or two tank deal, you drop to fill the tank up. And then as soon as it, the, the pond is full, then you leave. You may have a thousand gallons sitting and waiting there, but, but to keep the flow going, once you fill the pond up, you leave so the next one can get in and keep the flow going. And that kind of alleviates the, uh, Waitsfield and Berlin have 3,000 gallon tankers. Everybody else has um, 2,000 to 1,800 to 1,200. Yes. So that's, that 3,000 gallons really throws a wrench in the works. So if they drop 1,500 and then go get full, now they're kind of in the same cycle as everybody else. So you're not bogging down with a 3,000 gallon tanker. And the other thing we did, we learned is what gallons the, the other towns had on their tankers. So that, that gives us a better idea when we're, when we're calling what to expect as far as water supply. Yep. Do you have that data for Waterbury and, um, and uh, for, Montpelier? For Waterbury, we have Montpelier. They have a thousand gallons. That's they don't just have any tankers. Probably doesn't have tankers. They they work on city yeah, water. Oh yeah. And so they they bring the thousand gallons on their truck, and that's it. So yeah. unless we're supplying them, uh, which we have the capability, we can we can fill from our pond and run a line to them, and fill them simultaneously while we're shooting water off another couple of hoses. Um, especially with engine six has the capability to do that. Um, but usually what happens is they'll use up their thousand gallons and then they'll start off on our, they'll use our hoses. Um, so. That house on Town Hill Road, that fancy new house that burned. They, okay, so. Is that, a, does that have water there? I'm Town water? sure it does. Yeah, so they've always but, had a problem with the pressure up there on Town Hill. Yeah, um, but on, on that particular fire, Montpelier, called Berlin, of I mean Barry, of course, and then they called Waterbury, and they called Northfield, they called East Montpelier, they skipped Berlin, they skipped us. So, I mean, that was in the middle of the night, they would have gotten response from us. There's nothing we can do about them not they don't calling. Call, right? and, and, I mean, we could have hooked up a hydrant and shoved it up the hill easily with one of our engines. Where was it on Why did it burn? It a fire. I, I don't know what the cause was. I, did, I know it was in the garage. The whole garage, yeah, they tore it down. Just so, so it, where just is it? Just past farm. Was it? Bob Forty's old house. Scooter batteries? Yeah. You know, I have to tell you, my son, I kid you not, in Boston, his apartment right next door, he sees these girls outside the apartment and they're like, Screaming, he's like, "What's wrong?" He's like, "Our scooter caught on fire," and the po the police, I mean, the 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 fire department was there, and smoke was like, it was starting to burn their apartment because of the scooter battery. Is it a Tesla battery? No, but I mean, what is up with that? That's don't a real park, problem. Don't park your Tesla too close to the house, Liz. It's, uh, it's lithium batteries have have a problem. And like, there was a Tesla that burned a house down in California. Yeah. It, what the way that the battery packs are designed is instead it's not just one big monolith battery they have all these little cells in them mm -hmm. and if one catches on fire unless they build it such that it can't do a chain reaction then the whole thing catches on fire and a leaf i think the the numbers quoted on the leaf on the article that i saw four thousand gallons to put out a leaf fire very hot well, so think of your car, I, I we're, we're talking, uh, I think Tesla's, they were talking somewhere around seven, 8,000 gallons to get a, a Tesla. All right, fine. <laughs> I won't burn the house down or burn the car but down. But I, I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. but there's, a, a real, there's, there's a real problem. I mean, now the bolts are having problems. I mean, th this isn't a, it seems to be, you know, it was computer batteries. These listing my batteries are a problem. It's, and it's, it tends to be the ones that are, of lower quality. Makes sense. You right. can fill in the where that comes from. Yeah. But that so, seems to be. Yeah. 
So thank you for that. I mean, yeah, just, that just having that, that kind of report and information is very helpful to us. And, uh, and I appreciate it. It, it. it ultimately doesn't solve the question of whether we pursue changing the governance arrangement or not. We've had no further discussions about that. Um, I would encourage you to keep thinking about that. And at some point, we maybe need to devote a meeting to talking about just that, just that issue. But in the meantime, I think the kind of information you're giving us tonight, and it's great to have you guys here in person, but you know, if, if you came, I think we have it now once, once a month, we're mm -hmm. supposed to meet. Yeah. Well, month. maybe, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just speaking for myself, but I mean, if you, if you came once every other month, once we get through this process, if you came once every other mm -hmm. month and then gave us some kind of a written report, just like your verbal report, that would be fine. I mean, it's, it's always good to see you because then we can ask you questions that we don't, things we don't understand, not that we can't reach out to you. But well, what's on your agenda coming up? Do you have some other things you're planning? Or are you so to next month is CPR training for the fire department and the fast club members. Um, we have one of the new, one of the new people that's, that we have on the department is going to go through EMT training. Um, so she's an LNA right now. Mm -hmm. um, so she'll be another fast club member. The state is coming up with a, a different kind of emergency response category that's, um, <clears throat> so that it's uh, 20 to 16 to 20 hour course, uh, CPR, blood control, you know, quick first aid stuff, but they can still be on the fast squad and respond to a, a call. Um, so is the state will probably get that done at the beginning of the year. And then we have uh, two people that want to take that course as well. So they will be added to the fast squad. So Great. how many people do you currently have active in the department? Uh, we're up to 13 now, I think it is. Good. That's exciting to hear about some new people mm -hmm. that live yeah. right next door to the fire station. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Are you counting Liam because we haven't boarded No, I have, no I'm not counting him. We do have one other applicant. Oh, excellent. That uh, we're checking his references and he hasn't we'll, been we'll be working on his application within a month or two. And you've got a woman who's coming on the LP, LNA or is that a man? She, no, she, a woman. Is that the only woman on the department? No, we have three. So she makes three. Three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, three. Right. And I'm an honorary member of Absolutely. the department. Of course that you are. <laughs> anybody, anybody who suits up should be an honorary member. <laughs> <laughs> some degree. Certainly earned something. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I just, I just want to say again. I mean, the, you know, the difference in in spirit and friendliness is very much appreciated. I mean, we need to, we need to work together. To help solve these problems, and you guys, you guys are in the lead, but we're here to support you. However, this process goes. It's a common so goal. Yeah. I really, uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, I know the other board members do as well. Any, anybody have any other questions? I um, do. I just wanted to know: um, Do you anticipate a difference? <laughs> oh, Eric! <laughs> do you anticipate a difference in the stipend amount that was budgeted We're based on a change? Probably in going all to this? see a difference in that. Yes. Okay. I don't. I don't know as we really figured that out. We we haven't figured the out exact I, dollar amount. I ran some rough numbers um, before we voted on this to to tell the members what it would go up to. So obviously for this this fiscal year, it's probably going to be an increase. But there again, it's you know how many calls we get, how many people show up. Um, we are doing the you know paying for coming to meetings and trainings and that kind of thing. So that's going to bump everybody up some, whether it takes us above. Um, so this year is going to be kind of a. But again, knock on wood, we, we may have some extra on vehicle maintenance because we're doing good on that. We just had to have them inspected and serviced. So yeah. um, so far there hasn't been any. I mean, last year was a bad year for engine one. Right. But, you know, look at what happened to the town truck. Oh, yeah. How yeah. did you guys do on the, have you found out how you did on the fundraiser for the concert? $499. No. You said $499? Oh. Sorry, I didn't hear it. So that yeah. was pretty good? Yeah. 500 yeah. Awesome. So any other fundraising efforts? No, not right now, because normally we had been doing the 50-50 the raffles at the, the bandstand concert. And how much did you get from that? When did we would normally do it? Yeah. Um, Probably. It yeah, was about six or seven hundred dollars for the year. Yeah, yeah. for the Some series of six concerts. Back, probably. 
So, um, but it's, you know, that was a learning thing. And if, if they have something down at, at the Red Hen this winter, I mean, COVID kind of knocked that out last year. Right. Um, right yeah. We, I think it was around two, two $300 for the winter before that. Yeah. Uh, Just in donations. Well, no, we sold um, hot dogs oh, and oh, hot dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just ask for a point of clarification? The, you, you, the, you're getting, the firefighters are getting paid $10 per call now, $20 per training, $15 per work night. Does that sound right? It's $10 an hour or part thereof. An hour, that's what I want to ask. Okay. And also, what did you pay before that? Uh, $5 for two hours or part thereof. Okay. So how does how does that how does that compare with what Waterbury is currently paying? It's still low, right? It's still uh, for their lowest one. I think it's like uh, three dollars and change an hour lower. Yeah, but it's a big step for us. Yeah, big it's, step. For it's us. a step in the right direction. Yeah. Right. We modify yeah. it as, as, as we and, be as we move forward. And what we did is in the bylaws that we we added that it would go up with the annual consumer price index. So whatever our social security increase is, so that we don't have to every year vote. Okay, I recommend you use the consumer price index, not the social security <laughs> increase. Well, we, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna Based use, on what I've seen in social yeah. security increases, I would tell you. We're gonna use a government increase yeah. to, right. to well, up. Yep. Yeah. So, so it's all about it. I mean, does it say specifically? Good, it was, uh, I, I, I don't, we, we said it specifically, I don't remember if it was social security or the government, or the consumer price index. Okay. Well, I seriously would recommend changing it away from Social Security. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, that was so we don't have to revisit this every year. Right. Right, right, right. Well, we know you don't do it for the money. <laughs> right. <laughs> that so was that, was that well received overall in the department? I mean, the increase? Yeah. I think so. Good. Everybody was in support of it. And we see a, a, I mean, there are a couple people that had to work on Sunday and expectedly they were planning to be there. Uh, but uh, so well, there before, you go. before we had to have a 75% requirement, 75% of being in meetings and trainings yep. to get the stipend at all. Yep. And so that was a driver for people to come. So now we're, people are getting paid for an hour to an hour or two to come. So. Yep. Sure. <clears throat> well, one last thing. There are some boxes yep. in the foyer downstairs for you guys. And just open them. I didn't realize they're for you. Oh. Get them. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, Dave didn't say anything when I showed up this afternoon. I, I, okay. I saw I saw the box exactly. they were open, but I didn't know who they were for. So, okay, we will grab them. Yep. So is this door open? Or you just go downstairs. Okay. All right. So I do just have a thought for you guys to think about. Um, our family has a summer house over in the Adirondacks, in the community of Putnam Station, New York, which is very similar in size to Middlesex, <laughs> and what they do is. Once a year, they send out a fundraising letter to every house in town, and they get ten or twelve thousand dollars a year. Is that from that letter? To, are they, is that in addition to the tax money that's going? Yes. Oh yeah, okay. it's like just right. that's fundraising. Fundraising for the fire department. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying. I think you'd be surprised <laughs> how many how many people would respond to that, and it isn't that. I mean, it takes a little work to get it set up the first time, but once you get it set up, it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And she has all the addresses over there. That lady just came to the message. <laughs> and probably labels. Yeah. But it's just it's just a thought. Just yeah, to, no, just to send a little letter and say, you know, here's what we did for the town this past year. As usual, we're looking for new equipment, new this, new that, and if you can make it a you know, like maybe one year it's towards the air tanks and the next year, so it's for a specific thing, not just generally going in the pot. Mm -hmm. I think you could, I, I would be surprised if you wouldn't get. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that they're also paying taxes on it because one thing the bandstand was, well, we don't want to sell the 50-50 tickets while we're asking for donations. Um, so I, I just want to make sure that, that it was. I just want to make sure I understand your question. When you say so, so their the, taxes are supporting the fire department okay. to the extent the town supports the fire department. So yes, it's above and beyond that. Okay, this I just want to make sure that, for that. that you, you were okay with, with that, that it was a, essentially a double thing. You bet. Yeah. Okay, all right. You bet. But I'm, I, I just think that would, you know, I, I, I never really thought about it before, but I got that letter. Our family's been giving money to that fire department for 75 years, every year like clockwork. So 
It's tax deductible for them, too. Yeah. The other thought I had, and I think we talked about this, but I think that they, they can be successful are those coin drops. But what was the reasoning? Because it was a state it's, highway? The, it's um, number one, we technically don't have a large enough stretch in Middlesex for the speed limit wise. Um, it's And it, the state has been, the last time we did it, it was very difficult to get them to give us approval to have it. Because you have to have a certain length of um, slower speed straight away yeah, that they allow it to set up. They're, they're, they really wanted people to shy away from Well, Tumbridge has been doing it for years and they stop, it's only a two lane road and it stops everything. Yeah. They do it well, when they have the fair. <laughs> they the must three be or four, they get the permission. The three or four the towns, small towns in New York that I'm familiar with and do it. They do it over the Fourth of July, and again, they, they, it's a, right in the middle of the state road. Right. So, so I think and, you should. I mean, we, it's not so much the matter of a state road; it's the speed limit. So yeah, I'm just saying, for instance, I, I don't know, guys. I'm not. No, they I'm, told, not, I'm not trying to tell you your business, and I don't know the terms. rules, but. I've been I've been paying particular attention to what I see other fire departments doing to see if I found any good ideas and that letter I think is is a great idea. But I think the Tumbridge idea is a good. We've all been to the Tumbridge fair and we've all paid money to go and then we throw our little ticket and that is a that's a but road that's, that's got I mean, a higher speed. Yeah, but they're working with a different to district Tumbridge. than we are, and mm -hmm. right. it was it was a hard thing to fight up here. And in the end of the day, we of. Uh, Collecting for about five six hours netted us about twelve hundred dollars. Well, because you were in the wrong spot. Yeah, but that's the only place they allow us. Where are you going to with our department? <laughs> that's their department. <laughs> yeah. It's their fire no. department. I mean, the thing that, is, that's... they don't want you setting up a uh, coin drop in anything with more than a thirty five mile an hour speed zone. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. 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 Think so. You can't yeah. put it in the S curves down here because there's not enough warning. We used to have it out on Route Twelve, right? But that's a fifty mile an hour, so they wouldn't let us do it there anymore. Right. And we well, and, uh, enough said. I mean, I or, believe me. <laughs> let's 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 collaborate and do what makes sense. But I think the letter, and and we can help you in terms of giving you mailing lists and you know whatever you need to whatever you need to do that. When do they normally do that? What time of year? Uh, I would do it in December so people can. You know, in the fall, the when people are thinking about their it. taxes, so I don't know about I don't know what the, whether the right time you you you're in the fundraising world. When you guys send out your letter? Yeah, I mean, I think in general, thinking about the fall is a good time because that's when people are thinking Tax about what their taxes is too. Okay, yeah. I, I just everyone wanted. does it at that time, so you could do it at any other time of the year. Yeah, but Peter, you probably have that letter that you were talking about. You could just see the date on it, or maybe you don't keep it. But you know, you might also want to add in it, into it something like, you know, now's the time to change your battery and your smoke detector. Do like some tips or something, and then just say if you want to make a donation. Well, just a one, just just a one-page yeah. summary. A little right. a little safety yeah. tip would be great. But you know, here's how many calls we had. Blah blah blah. Um, yeah, you know, I we're here. For, we're here to support your health People and safety. Will give. At the Fall Harvest Dinner, we would every year make basically the same exact amount for 10 years and it was like a net of like nine thousand dollars or something after everything mm -hmm. and that was people giving big gifts all the way to five dollars yeah we had from one dollar to a hundred dollars right yeah and then envelope so. okay anyway well, well thank so you very much you, next month one of you is coming to our meeting at least okay yes I mean, more are welcome, but what, what day is it? it? It'll be oh, the same day as this. Yeah. Yeah. Seven o'clock. That's right. Okay. Seven o'clock, the third Tuesday. Yep. Okay. Sounds Sounds great. Great. Very good. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for your Bye. service Thank as you. usual. Have a good night. Yeah. You too. Thanks, what the third Tuesday is that really yeah so it's our meeting? second meeting it's after our second meeting oh we're the first and third right okay, okay we're yeah. back on schedule well yeah. we're back, back off the we're back off schedule yeah back to the agenda right so it's the before me was the consideration of how to allocate coronavirus state and local funds which I will tie into that and say we received our first half payment. So we got in just over $90,000 um, last week. So 
I need to know when, if and when you're going to make a decision on what to do. I don't want to open up a separate account for this if it's just going to be a pass-through. I have a separate account number sitting in our chart of accounts right now, so it's the money came into there. Separately designated. Yeah. Separately designated, but I don't want to have to go back and open a money market account, which is what those other accounts basically are, if it's going to fly right out the yeah. door. So, I, I don't want to... You know, I, I feel like we're, just to be totally honest, I feel like we're between the devil and the deep blue sea because, I mean, we got a little cryptic note from Phil saying Rob had completed his review of the MOU and we were going to have a draft soon. Well, we don't have it now as far as I know, Sarah. And we were also supposed to find out what towns were participating right. and we don't have that. Right. Well, and, and the reason is, <laughs> the reason we don't is have I think everybody, well, I think everybody's in pretty much the same situation we're in. So that's my only concern is that I think it's likely to be a while. I don't I don't see us writing writing any checks in the next uh, oh like the fall of Afghanistan. Things could change quickly, but uh, I don't know. You're you can be a good job. I'm very comfortable having it having it for the time being, just in the in the general uh, Right. I mean account. it's not that it's earning I mean it's earning a little bit of interest, but not a ton of interest. But, but it wouldn't be earning um, a ton of interest in a what do they pay now? One and a half percent yeah, or one percent like or something some something in there. I think for all the money we've got in there right now we might have made um oh, six dollars or something less. Yeah. Right, 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 so, something right, right, crazy. Right. So, doesn't doesn't pay for the bottled water. Right. So um, I'll leave it sitting there and but I you know, I just and there's supposed to be more coming and the next right. one is supposed to be you know, substantially more. Right. Well I have a feeling something's gonna happen, but how fast it's gonna happen and you know, I feel like we're at the we're at the mercy of things that right now are beyond our control or beyond our knowledge. So did you see that um, consolidated put fiber up um, all the way to the top of um, East Hill. East Hill. Yeah, they did on the Montpelier side. Yeah, yeah, on the Montpelier side, and so our friends now have fiber from that. And that's and that's in direct competition it's with direct, the cable, yeah. which runs right up there too. So and it's in direct competition with this. Right. Yep. Well, as as Phil said, and I've I've read and seen and whatever you know they're never going to reach out to the last mile they're going to no, they're going to nibble around the edges but they're not going to reach the last mile but i mean we still we still haven't received a definitive word about you know we have some kind of an idea of what other things the money could be used for but i don't feel like we have a final answer to that question either and I have questions, you know, as I think I said before, I have questions about this whole MOU thing and how it works and what happens and if, if, if CD Fiber uh, inappropriately uses the money or misappropriates the money somehow, are we responsible to pay it back to the feds and all those kind of questions? I mean, I'm not, I'm not ready to go by a long stretch, I can tell you. So, um, are we looking at this? Oh, no, that was, that's later on, never mind. That, that letter's kind of a different issue. Yes, yeah, it is. That's a different issue. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Well, I just wanted to ask. No, no, no. It's a good, it's it's a good it question. If, if I feel like moving it, move it. If I don't, don't. Right. Okay. Use your, okay. trust your judgment. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll go from there. Um, next question is Edward Jones called, and it's time for the annual review on the cemetery funds. Would you like me to schedule? him to come in and talk to you about it or how much is in that fund mm. i mean just off the top of your head twenty-five thousand, two hundred fifty. Oh oh no it's hundreds 120 yeah there's something like something up there like yeah, that just yeah and it's um and actually it's been doing very well <laughs> well so, as had as has everything that has anything has, to do yeah. with the market so yeah. you know i can just answer their questions. I didn't know if you wanted him because we know how some people feel about this, so I didn't know if you wanted to meet with him or not. 
I don't know. I mean, I'm willing to do what everybody else wants to do. I don't think we need to meet with him. Okay. I'd like. Guess I'd like to have him. Can you just send, us? send us a little a little letter and say, you know, here's here's how the money's invested, which we already have the documentation of we that. We do have but the documentation. I don't recommend, you know, at this time for this reason, I don't recommend any changes, or I recommend these changes, and then we can get back to them. If, I hate to have them come all the way here to yeah. give us a five minute okay. spiel. I don't know how. Yeah. The last okay with time you brought portfolio yeah. stuff and all of that, and I don't know if it's necessary because it's doing so well. Yeah. Anyway. Well, we want, all we want to do is 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 demonstrate when I think of our auditors that we're paying attention and because yeah. we have a fiduciary duty. Taking appropriate duty. action, yeah. right? Yeah. Did did they did they used to make presentations to the cemetery commission board? Oh yes. No. Did I they? I think so. It was the big. It was the highlight of the whole year. Oh, was it? Oh, That's yeah. what I thought. So are the cemetery commissioners still in a position where they can ask for that, even if we don't? No, I don't know if you want it. You are the ones overseeing the funds. We don't want them making choices. Right, how absolutely. It all fell out. Right. right, and we're not gonna make choices either. We're gonna, we're gonna listen to recommendations. We're not gonna pick investments, I can tell you that. Um, what do you think? What do you think, Dorinda? Should we have him come? I, don't I, think... I mean, I feel that it's doing well enough, just like you said, everybody else, that there's no, you know, so I don't know if it's necessary. Yeah. In their world, a $100,000 account is right. not a big account. Right. No. So, you know, it's not like we're going to get any special treatment because we ask him to come here. Okay. Well, I'll see what he has to say. And if he, we'll if he says, I really feel comfortable, you know, I feel like I should come, then we'll, we'll see him. Okay. Who, who is the person that you're dealing with? Uh, Martin, uh, I can't okay. remember his last name. He's out of Montpelier. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Um, and the only other thing, which is just, I think it needs to be addressed in general, is our email issues. I mean, I sent out orders on August 3rd, and I had one person respond right. to them. Yeah. And I went ahead and mailed the checks anyways because these vendors had to be paid. Right. So uh, this new email situation is not working. <laughs> right. I can't get into mine, and I, I've got to get back in touch with Phil. Phil called yeah. me back, but we just haven't yeah. connected. Yeah, me so. too. I mean, I thought I registered, but I'm not registered, and I think I was one of the people who responded at least to the well, here's, no. No. The only one here's, was Phil. Oh, yeah. And here's, then you called me like a few days later, and because yep. you thought we were having a meeting on that Tuesday night or something, and but I mean, it, it's creating like double the work if you have to go back and send well, out to Here's what I would suggest, Arinda, and I know this isn't what Phil wants us to do. But for the time being, until everybody can get hooked up and get the damn thing working, send it through our old emails. I mean, if we're meeting in person, you don't need to do it. But if there's something important that we need to deal with, just send it through the old email so everybody gets it. Because I've, I've been going in there and I have all this, I mean, there's just a lot of crazy stuff going on in there. And I think I sorted it out, but. One thing that we could also do is that it, um and Phil could teach us how to do this, is we can probably have them forwarded to our regular email. Right. So that way it's going to this address that can be then tracked if we ever need for, you know. Yeah, open. he was going to do it just the opposite. He was going to have our old email get forwarded to the new ones, but. No, 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 but I mean, I mean having, having the town right. email go to our Gmail accounts. Right. I think that meets the requirement of it's the town email that they would have access to. Right. I don't right. think. I, th I think what he said was, because I asked him the question, that by having it forwarded to our Gmail account, that doesn't open up our Gmail account because it's going to the town account first. But maybe that's a question we need to ask the yeah. But it's just that I mean, it's a, it's a struggle when we have to... when we have two of the three members can't communicate, and I, I honestly forgot. I apologize. I just... yeah. yeah, and me too. I, I have it only on my phone because I don't know how to get it on my computer, and it's in this other inbox in my work email, and I just. Haven't looked at it. And I think, <laughs> and I think the other thing we need to do, in all in all deference to Phil and his efforts, is whether it's Reuben or somebody, we need to have somebody to straighten that out so we can so it's working for everybody. It's on everybody's computer. Yeah. If the emails can be forwarded, well, I mean, Phil has the best intentions, but 
he doesn't, you know, he's busy for whatever right. reason and he can't, he can't get to stuff. Right. So, you know, we need to be able to communicate with each other successfully and, right. you know, for the time but, being. Yeah, but it needs to be able to get like on your computer, like Shane, it gets it on his computer, but he can't get it on his phone. Yeah. I can't get it on anything, but. <laughs> yeah, right. No, well, I'm, I, I did manage it to get, to get it set up on, on, uh, I followed his directions that I got it set up on my phone and then I then I was able to get it set up on my computer and now I get it on my iPad so I get it. I get it everywhere. For some reason for some reason the iPad doesn't display it right but I'm not worried about that. If I can get it on my computer and my phone that's, yeah, well, I don't, I'm, that's I'm, good. I'm not hooked up so I have it anywhere. But the other right which registered. is registered. No, it, just, it doesn't work. So the other thing the other thing that can be done I know is at the very least uh, the town email can kick out an email to our Gmail account saying you have new email in the town of Middlesex account. Yeah. It's just hard to get in the habit to look at it, it all the time. And if you well, can't connect, it's impossible. Well, so. I, I carry my phone all the time, you know, and I'll look at it for emails. I got two other accounts in there, and I look at it, and if there's something I need to go to the computer for, fine. But I, I got it into my computer once. But I can't get back in there, and I. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I, I well, struggled. for some reason, for some reason, I very carefully saved how you get into Rackspace, whatever it is, app dot Rackspace dot something or other dot something or other, and that was working fine. And then all of a sudden, it stopped working, and I just went into, I just Googled Rackspace, and I got in that way, and all of a sudden, it popped up and said. You know, email address and password, and boom, I was in. But how the hell that happened, I have no idea. <laughs> That's all I do is just Google right. Rackspace.com right. right. and it comes up. So. Yeah, right. What do you, how do you spell it? R A C K S P A C E. dot com. Dot com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe I'll try That's that and see what. Yeah, I mean, I, and we have you. You could see everything. I, could, I just don't know why your mail's not showing. Yeah, up, the so. mail doesn't. I because I did that rackspace dot yeah. com, and I can see my email address, but I can't get into the mail. Well. Uh, Whatever. I, 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 I appreciate your frustration, Doreen. I think, no, it, I think to some just, extent Sarah's probably had, this, had the same issue. Um, well, we've been pretty diligent about using the new one, I think, Sarah. I've been trying to, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, the, and I also sent you guys end of year yep. um, budget status yep. and July's budget status. Thank you. So I don't know, I know you don't have not had time to look at them, but they're there, we came in. Fortunately, we got a lot of extra money we weren't expecting, which kept us in budget. So what was, yeah. what was the money we were expecting? Well, $72,000 for the highway. Um, let's see, you can look down the front yeah, page. We got the extra page. money from state aid to highway. We've got, I mean, definitely a lot more money than we were planning on. Um, so that made a difference. We had some grants that were never budgeted that, um, that we expended money for. So, you know, we came out pretty good. So with this extra money that we got in, that took we care of it. our, <laughs> right, that took, yeah. took care of our overages. Yeah. Yep. And what's not in, uh, reflected in the highway number is the truck we bought outright because we put that to just a capital purchase. Right. Yep. So it's not, it wasn't, because originally when Mark was here, he had put it into um, equipment purchases. So right. we moved right. it out of there and put it yep. into an asset. Okay. Are you done with your presentation? I think so. <laughs> how, how are we coming with hiring the new person, or have we had any luck? Any we are not. We've been a no go on anything right now. Um, we had to clean up some things in the accounting. We're preparing for the audit, so we are remaining status quo for right now. I had said that I wasn't going to make any decisions until we had everything ready for the audit and to go. Um, we had one person back out on it that was interested in it. Um, so 
um, but we haven't re-advertised or anything like that. Um, I will say Amy is very interested in continuing on going forward, um, but I've made it clear that we've made no decision yet. And so is it your thought that you would probably try and get some additional people to take a look at the job too? Well, we weren't very successful last time. No. And um, I thought Amy wanted to step down at the end of December. She made the decision when she she decided she's stepping down from Lister. 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 Okay. And would like to stay on as accountant. Forget Malone, okay, for the time being. No problem at all. I don't have any problem with Amy. And as a matter of fact, she went in and she dug out, you know, some things that, you know, and I have to say that um, the year, as she's gone through a year of doing this, and so there's a lot bigger comfort level um, in what she's doing. She understands it more, and so I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Well, so. I guess I guess what I would say to you is, it's up to you. But yeah. if things are going okay and you're comfortable, why do we need to stir up a hornet's nest? Let's let's well, let's give it let's give it another month or six Amy's weeks or on, something. She's, we're completely open about the whole discussion, and um, so if I find that. You know, I think I should advertise. I will, if not. Okay. Is she taking up any of the stuff about managing grants or any of that kind of stuff? There's no real management of grants. We've come up with a very good system. Sarah is monitoring them. We're monitoring them. We now have books in two different places. So there's a double check going on. And I think we've just made internal changes. Perfect. That is. Yeah, that's, what did you say? Out really well. yeah. that's helping out. Good. Yeah. Terrific. Thanks. Um, we're both so stepping we're, up. Maybe that's we're, really maybe we're impressive. searching for a prop for a problem that no longer exists or potentially I, I, doesn't any longer exist. I have exist. to say that you know it certainly feels that way. I think there was a lot of surprises at the end of the audit last year yeah. that we didn't know grants existed. We didn't know. Certain you know, grants. We didn't know certain grants. Certain grants yeah. existed, right. right. Certain grants didn't exist. So, um, but that's been taken care of. But thank you both. You both stepped up. And I, and I for one, on the board, maybe I speak for all of us, really appreciate what well, you've done. Well, and also thank you, Amy, because that represents yeah. a yeah. real turnaround for her. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, would, if you had told me I'd be saying the things I'm saying tonight two months ago, I would have said, no. No way. Um, so. No. And um, so, no, That's I think great. things are going well. Good. Good, good, good. Anything great. else? That's it for the treasurer. Okay. So we did agree, just, just to be clear, we did agree that for the time being, for important items, we'll send them by regular email also. Sarah. Yes, okay. Okay? Yeah. Until we get everybody connected and everything uh, and everything working the way it's supposed to. Appointing a replacement for outgoing Jess, Jess Clark on the zoning board of adjustment action likely. First of all, I want to apologize for jumping ahead on this because uh, I know that we didn't just didn't announce her risk. You know, she announced she she in an email a couple weeks ago. She said, oh, by the way, I'm resigning. And so I just kind of went, took the initiative to kind of advertise for this because we have this big hearing coming up on the 25th of August. And I just wanted to make sure, if possible, you had someone to appoint. Yeah. So uh, that's why I kind of didn't wait to say, just is stepping down. Now we'll have to that to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I put so, it on the website, I posted it, and I put it on Front Porch Forum. So I feel like yeah. this. So the good news is that I did I two, two things. Um, I twisted David Asseltine's arm uh, and almost got him to say, yes, I'll step up. But then I put the note on Front Porch Forum and we got a, I mean, he was just being a good doobie. I got a great note from Stacy Skadberg, who's young, yay, 
Um, and she wrote, um, I'm right to, to express my interest in serving on the Zoning Board of Adjustment. I've been a resident of Macy Road since 2016 and I'm a registered voter. I have a law degree and my background at this point includes legal practice and insurance defense. Gener general board. practice here in Vermont and most recently five years of adjusting liability claims. I have an interest in land use and real estate. In my current occupation, I'm the happy recipient of all our timber trespass cases. And I'm a quick study. I'd be happy to submit a resume if that would be of assistance. And she is available to serve at the the August 25th meeting. I think she sounds great. Me too. Plus, she's young. Did I say young? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So does she work so often when she says that? I don't know. It looks sounds like she's a, she's an she's an insurance defense. How do you know she's young? Uh, I've met her many times. You know, okay. one of the great things about Stacy Scadberg, I don't know. If she, since she's going to feel about this, is that one time we had early voting. It wasn't in 2020, but so it must have been 2018. She came in to vote absentee out to here pregnant, and she said, well, I'm off to the hospital to have a baby. I said, you stopped off and voted before. Yeah, she was on her way. <laughs> was it a C-section? I don't know. I mean, the point is, the point is, what a, there you go. There's a voter, right? Yep. Wow. Well, also, I mean, when she said she's voting for two. timber something, something. Timber trespass cases. Hmm. Hmm. It's defense. Hmm. But anyway, so, and also that we have David Asseltine. The other thing is that we're going to have another opening because it's probably likely that Sarah Berger will come before you as the Planning Commission's recommendation for an assistant zoning administrator. Sarah Berger, who's awesome, is on the ZBA. She's also young. She's probably going to step off and take that position if you guys appoint her. That, but that's likely who the planning commission is going to recommend. And if we you can appoint. find a house for her in Middlesex, all the better. Does she not have a house? She's renting. She really wants to buy, and she nearly left us. Oh man, that would be tough. Okay. So. So you are recommending. I'm recommending Stacy. Okay. I mean, I'm sure David Asseltine will be fine with saying, "Okay, I'll wait for the next opening." That's that's my recommendation. She seems what's her last name? Scadberg. You speak height. She's I move the appointment of Stacy Scadberg to the Middlesex Zoning Board of Adjustment. Oh, second. 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 Steve. Steve did. Okay, great. It's been moved and seconded to appoint Stacy, whose last name I can't pronounce. Scadberg. Scadberg. Scad. To the zoning board of adjustment. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yay, we have Stacey. appointed her. Yay, thank, thank you, Sarah, for thank all the work you, you did to find us um, two people. Well, that's very nice of you. Hopefully, there'll be more. Because we're going to have another opening. So, what is the big hearing on the 25th? Uh, it is. Kingsbury, you know, KCOS, they already had already been approved for a 3,000 uh, square foot addition back when they had submitted their original plan to put in the, at, at 58 Center Road, but then um, the time lapsed. So now they, they didn't build it when they built the original the complex. So now they've got to go back to the ZBA and say, hey, remember that was approved, you need to reapprove it. And then somebody, Chastity Hook, wants a I don't know. She wants a. She just wants something to that may encroach upon the town's right of way, or was not within 75 feet of the center line. Sid Blum wants to put a house on Mead Road and at a, where his old house is. This has been a whole thing all summer. And then the other one is oh yes, a Joe home 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 industry used for I think a gunsmithing operation on Notch Road. I'm not the I'm not the secretary for the ZBA, but it sure feels like it. Four. You have four cases. They I don't. They have, yes. They do. Wow. Sarah, they need to find somebody to do that. Well, hopefully they're not all like that. I will not be here on the 25th. You don't have to be on the 25th. It's a ZBA meeting. ZBA. Oh, oh yeah. That's yeah. why it's wonderful to hear about yes. it. But know that <laughs> we don't have to go. <laughs> but Stacy does. Yes. Good. And Stacy's looking forward to it. She says she is. Okay. Approving the minutes of the July 20th, 21 regular select board meeting action likely is our motion. Steve can't vote on this. No. I'll move yep. it. Second. Oh. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Abstain. And Steve abstains. So we've approved them. Considering Weck's request to install a 7200 volt electrical distribution line on South Bear Swamp near Luther Putnam action likely. 
Do we have a diagram or a? Yeah. Does Luther Putnam know about What this? is the 7200 volt electric? That's is that like a big thing? That's big. No. Like a big tower? No, this is that. No, 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 no. no, no. Uh, it's a regular high voltage. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they pass around. They're hard to put. They're, they, for some reason, I have a hard time scanning them. I don't know why. <laughs> Where's Luther Putnam's house? What road? South Fair Swamp. Road. Oh, right, he said that. So I think this actually kind of goes along with the um, uh, driveway, the access permit you guys are being asked to approve, which is for Elizabeth Colgate and Raymond Medina. They bought this lot on South Fair Swamp, formerly owned by Mike Panarchik from my old miss, New Jersey. Um, okay, so it, it basically looks like all of this If this is the line Do I see that letter? I'm just looking for where the, where the extension is. Oh, right, it says for Elizabeth Colgate. Right. Yeah, so there's two things going hand in hand there. Yeah. Oh, here it is. It's the yellow, which yeah. is the new, right? Yeah. It's just this little right. spurt up here. I don't understand what the star is, though. What's that star? I think, Mary, are they two? Are they the same permits? They just have to be signed twice. Um, I was just looking at that. Yeah, I think so. That's usually the, the format that those guys use. Good. But it's exactly the same. Right. We, we keep what we spent. We send two copies. Two copies. You guys sign both copies if you approve it, and then I send them and they send me one back. You want to look at that, Steve? From what I can tell, it looks fine to me. I mean, we've never had any issues with blocking electric co op that I'm aware of. What's this little dot? This yellow dot down here is this is where they're putting it? I presume that yellow is the extension. See down there, there's a little yellow dot. Is that where's the road cut? Isn't this the road cut they're talking about? This is the road. That's the road. Yeah, I got that, but why? I don't know the answer, Mary. Okay. You're the Washington Electric Co op expert. I don't <laughs> know that either. I'm just trying to hire the general manager. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that is? See, that's yellow by definition. But. Please. I'm going to talk about two other things while you that's, guys are looking at that. Yeah, that's, I don't think that's anything, but that's their extension right there. That's the only thing they're asking about. Okay. I've been, are you ready to go with this son? It also no, says that WEC is asking permission to cut and trim trees and brush that are in the road right away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, I think, probably a part of everyone. Yeah, yeah so, go ahead. Just so we don't wants, screw it up, do you guys want to take a vote on this and start signing it? So I just, yep, yes. Okay, good. Okay. So is there a motion to approve? Move that we approve um, Washington Electric Co-op's request to put in a um, 7200 7, <laughs> distribution line. Okay, on for South a second. Trump, I'll second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of approving the motion for the Washington Electric Co-op uh, one pole line extension. Uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. We've do approved you, it. So do you guys all have pens? Does he need to sign, or we all have to sign? You, in this we case, all, all you have. You all have to sign it. We're gonna buy this. Not the, not the truth. Not the I, same. I looked for one, and I couldn't find it. It's all right, Liz. For sharing. The same isn't true for the uh, road. The, the okay. Curve curve cuts. Cuts. Here, this goes with it. All right. Um. I've been following while we're doing this. I've been following the COVID developments, as I'm sure all of you have, mm -hmm. and I've thought about it quite a bit. And I think we should go back to our Zoom meetings for at least the next 60 days, and not have in person. I mean, this tonight I was I was uh, I talked to Sarah this afternoon. I said I'm going to ask everybody to put a mask on when they come in here. Well, nobody had masks on, and I ultimately decided we had pretty decent separation here, but this is probably uh, the worst situation I've been in all week in terms of being exposed to people who aren't masked. And 
I, I mean, all requiring, I know, requiring masks is one thing, but my, my honest to God worst fear would be that as a vaccinated person, somehow I infect somebody else and I don't even know that I'm carrying the virus. And as much as it's been great to see everybody in person, I just think we well, need to are consider. we required to have one person here regardless until yes. the state says something? Yes. You are required to have one person here. I'm going to call the Secretary of State's office and see if it can be me. Because the, the theory, the concept is that the place be open, that right. if anybody wants to come in and attend a meeting, they can attend a meeting. It's just that, you know, everybody would be virtual. And I would just say, if they showed up, I would just say, you know, we're trying to hold these meetings virtually, you know, but because the governor hasn't given us the green light to just say all, just strictly virtual. No, but I think that's fine. And I think we can, I mean, you know, if we divide them up, that means you're going to come once every other month or something like that and be down here with, with Sarah. I mean, I, I'm perfectly comfortable sitting here six feet away or 12 feet away from Sarah and doing it. It's just having a real... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll see if I can see if that passes muster. Um, but I did get a call this afternoon from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission asking us how we were going to proceed, and I told them that we were discussing it. And she said every other town she's talked to, they're all discussing it this week. Right. So my 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 feeling is that something's going to happen. Well, I just think, you know, and I've said this before to everybody, but I just want to err on the side of safety. I mean, to think that our select board meeting could be a mini spreader or some horrible thing or people who come to our meeting are going to be so subject to you know the tracking and all the other uh stuff that goes along with it i just think it's a mistake yeah. so um i don't know if you're ready to make that decision now or you want to think about it or how we want to handle it but my strong recommendation is and we say if we're going to do it i would say we're going to do it for uh the months of september and october and in october we'll review it and see if we continue it or sure. not I'm fine, I'm fine with that. And you're just requesting that one of us be here with Sarah. Well, Sarah's going to find out if that if has to be the case. Yeah. But it might be the case that we have to take turns I say, yeah. being here. That's fine. But otherwise, it would be on Zoom. So would somebody like to make that motion? Sure. I move that the September and October um, board meetings be held by Zoom with Sarah Merriman, our assistant, uh, and one person from the board being present, and the rest, if necessary, if necessary. If necessary. Okay. Is there Until a second? I'll second. Okay. Thank you, Steve. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're zooming again. So all the more Same important to have that email. Well, yeah. Get my curb cuts. Oh, your curb cuts. But um, yeah, also be aware that because it's not an executive order, that orders have to be signed in, in person. person. Yep. It okay. can't be through an okay on an email. Right, so we can okay. stop in. Good point. Yeah, but we can all stop in. And we can stop in. We stop in. Yep, yep. Okay. or at least three of us. Three, yeah. At least three, yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. So the curb cuts. Um, Sarah, do you want to tell us what we need to know? Um, I think I pretty much put them in the, uh, the agenda. We've got two um, here for the uh, Lori and Joe McCarthy who are putting on West Hill, on West Hill Road. And the other on Macy's. Yeah, and they're, and they're on Macy's. It's just, and then and Shane has approved these, of course. And then there's the one for the, the people who have bought Mike Kanarchik's property on, on uh, South Bear Swamp who are getting the new power line. Okay. Do you want us to approve them together? Or Shane has approved them. Uh, Jane, Shane has approved them. They just need something in the minutes to show that they that the, they are approved and that Peter signs. Them. So, can I just ask you about Lori and Joseph McCarthy's request? Is that because their property fronts on both of them? I think both so. West? I think they need access onto West Hill Road. Yes. Yeah. And they, but what about Macy Road? Do they already have? I, I don't know. No, there's a two accesses. <laughs> I, I I went with the engineer okay, last year. And, and I know that Shane looked at the same things. One's on Macy. One's on Macy Road. And so they have two. They're going to have two. You don't always have to have a culvert. Entrances and access. On a driveway. I mean, they're going yeah, to have where, two. The way their property is. On, yeah. on no, their no, one no. piece of property. Are they yeah, building there? My driveway is down below the road. Know. There's no culvert. So okay. Well, they they had, oh, right. likely to be a culvert. They had an engineer's. Right. It doesn't have yeah, to be. Yeah. Um, it's. Uh, 
not Grenier. Um, yeah, it's uh, McLean McCain. Yes. I think Colbert. Yeah, McCain. The one that I have, I'm responsible for it. Well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> no, that's, that's a question. Just, that's, that's a question. That's a football that we have fumbled many times. I in wondered the past. because I've been hearing some things. No, we need to. Okay. We need at some point. We need to really look at that and decide what we're going to do because yes. now we're making exceptions and I know doing all kinds of things that we shouldn't do. Um, so, is there a motion to approve those curb cuts? I would suggest we do it in one motion. Okay. So, here's the McCarthy stuff. Yeah. Well, I can't figure it out, but if Shane's looked at it, you have. Yeah. I'll make the motion. Um, that uh, the Elizabeth Colgate slash Raymond Medina permit for uh, a request for a permit for a curb cut on South Bear Swamp Road be approved, and also that the Lori and Joseph McCarthy uh, request for two curb cuts, one on West Hill Road and another on Macy Road, uh, be approved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor of the motion? Please aye. say aye. 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 Woohoo! Aye. Okay. <laughs> it's been approved. So. Wait, you still have correspondence. You have that CD yeah. fiber thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's impossible. So. <laughs> Where would it go? This they're giant they're thing. not said. All they want, well, I, I read that and I, I took it to be I all they want is permission to, to survey. Survey? I thought they wanted to store, and they wanted to do a lease. Yeah, yeah. yeah but they wanted, but they wanted to determine. I mean, we don't even know the place, so this is asking permission to look into it. The way I read this, mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was. Yeah, I'm looking at that a little bit differently than yeah, that. Yeah, me too. We're looking for a place to house and maintain this equipment. Yeah, thing. this is right. a ten by ten concrete pad. But what I didn't understand was. That requires an area up to 40 by 40 housing core electronics that's, in a hardened structure. Like, that's, they're, they're looking for locations, so they're looking for towns to give them locations to do these two things. Two things, a 10 by 10 and a yes. 40 by 40? Yes. That's the way Because it says typically it's in a 10 by 10, but sometimes it's in a yeah. 40 so by 40. Yeah, what they're they doing is looking for two may things. Be suitable, right. So. One town might have a 10 by 10, one might have a 40 by 40. And I think right. we all have to have something, right? And we've got a no. building right out back. Uh, no. Well, they, I think they're going to build a building. I mean, they're going to put on a pad and build a building. They need the space. I oh. think that's two separate things, though. Mm. A 10 by 10 pad with a cabinet on it is one thing. And then the, the forty by right. forty. Right, I agree. Yeah. So what? So one is just a. It's a bigger version of the same thing, though. But I don't think uh, they're going to build it because this says that they consider your town office, town hall, public work garage, or fire station. Right. They're looking. So they're, so they're not going to be place. building it. Yeah, they're, they're looking for. A, they're looking for a spot they want on a the structure property. already there. They want it. That's right, and they may do some improvements. So we do we have. The space behind us, absolutely. I don't know. I think I'd offer it. Hold I, on, everybody. I was actually thinking of the fire station, but then I was going to no. ask the guys, but All right. figure that out. That's not what they're saying. Read this again. They're saying they need a space, and they're saying, um, please consider town properties. Like somewhere on our property, there's a place to put a 40 by 40 structure. Mm -hmm. You don't think so, Steve? You think they want to use an already existing structure? Well, it sounds like it. Town property, such as your town office, locations town to hall. permanently house and maintain fiber network equipment that CB Fiber would pay for. Typically, this so they're paying for the equipment. Typically, this equipment is housed in a cabinet anchored to a 10 by 10 concrete pad in a protected bollard fence location. So that that's that one is, thing. That is that's what, number one. So that's one of these things like the phone company has yep. in right. various places around town. It's a gray cabinet right. sitting on a concrete pad. And then they say, so that's that's thing number one. Uh but, 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 lost place. Concrete pad protected bollard. But, but. Some towns may be suitable for a core hub structure that requires an area of up to 40 by 40 housing core electronics in a hardened structure with redundant HVAC. That's that's one of these little telephone company buildings. Our buildings aren't hardened structures. They're, 
They're looking for a place to looking for land. Yeah. yeah. Well, gee, that would you know, mean our fire just, station you know, probably back, is a hard structure. But then you read this next paragraph down. I'm just saying they might. That might be of something. It would be of this is to almost forty feet across. There we go. Well, the, well you know that's why that our fire station our would probably fire station, be considered a hard. They might consider it. I mean, they say it up to four, up to forty by right. forty. But I well, mean, the bottom be, line is the bottom line is. I say let them look. Yeah, if I think so They come so too. and say we can use your old fire station. We can tuck it into the corner of someplace. Who knows what? And they're it is. willing to pay for it because they're willing to lease it. it says. Right, 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 right. So pay for the fire station. But let, all I'm saying is I don't mind having them look. I this don't is a, this isn't committing. Right, it, it isn't committing, committing us anything. To do it. And I think that's what they're looking for. I don't for. think they're, they're asking us to do anything right. Bunch now. of stuff from different. Well, we towns. have to say we have to get back to them and say. We have something for candidate you, locations. <laughs> okay, so they want us to recommend a candidate location. I think <clears throat> that last paragraph. Yep. Well, if we maybe we recommend a candidate location and they'll come sooner. <laughs> but yeah. here's the thing: Do they want to have a candidate location that's already like on a cable line, or are they looking for something? Well, it says they want to have it um, near. Um, well, they're saying public because. They probably don't want to lease the space from a private person. <laughs> no, I can promise you they don't. <laughs> and but we're I, hoping I that we'll just sort I mean, of donate I, some land or something to put this structure on. So we all agree we, we don't have any problem with them looking. The question is, what do we want to nominate? Do we want to well, nominate we'll only up. the fire station, or do we want to say, come and take a look at all our buildings, or what do we want to say? I don't think we want to give this up. If, if for some reason we decide we have to move our town hall, we don't want some weird structure sitting there. That's not a structure. It's that same structure. No, but I'm saying, I, my guess is that they're going to have their own little thing that they build. It's, and it's going to be well, the first one. The is, building part of it is the way I take it. The building part of it is they could use this town hall. They could use the building. fire station. They could use that old fire station. So the building isn't going to change. Here's the, here's the problem, and though. That's what it, that's we're, what we're going through this infrastructure study. We're at least thinking about maybe building a new town hall, maybe selling this property, maybe not. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to lease out a portion of this building and then we're locked into maintaining this building for the next twenty. Well, years. I don't think you want somebody using this building anyways because they're going to come in all times of the right. day. Right. I'm night. not. I, I wasn't saying this building. Like that. Yeah, I'm saying but that I building. But that, uh, I can tell you, under no stretch of anybody's imagination. Would that building be? I mean, this building isn't a hardened building. I with redundant. What does a hardened building mean? It means masonry. Oh, like stone. Well, I'm no, just I'm just saying means. hardened means. I mean, like it I doesn't think, mean an ancient wood frame building. Yeah, that's been I mean, maybe our current fire station would be the one that I think. How about we just ignore it and have them come to us and say, Middlesex, you seem like the perfect spot. What do you have? To I agree. <laughs> well, we might be okay for the first part. But I'm going to look up what is a hermit no, building. Says they house it in a cabinet anchored to a 10 by 10. Yeah, see, that's, cats. that's a pad out in the... So that would be that if they could get it in there, you know. That's but, what again, but, again, but again, once we do that, then there's no selling this property. Or there's no selling where that 10 foot by 10 foot. How long is this going to happen? I have no idea during well, this. But you can bet it's done. probably a 20 year lease or who knows what it is. I think it's free. I don't think, I think well, they're I wanting think you it. Just find out more about it. The hardened structure. Like everything else with CV fiber, it seems to be a mystery. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, it would be helpful if we had. Well, you know what? Here. Let me do this. I, I'm, I'm happy to do this. I will call Jeremy Hansen. Yeah. And I will say, listen, we don't really understand what we're asking for. Here's what we've got. We want to cooperate with you, but we don't want to be locked into some. Yeah. Because we're doing our own, we're doing our own. We're doing our own Okay, study. a hardened building has to do with um, computer room facilities that are designed to withstand catastrophes. Right. <laughs> I don't think that building is going to be a catastrophe. The closest catastrophe? would be the closest Look. would be the new fire department. Fire, yeah. I will call. <laughs> the, and Jeremy. walls hardened to resist tornadic forces. Right. <laughs> Where yeah. are you reading this? She's I'm reading it on the, the internet. <laughs> I rest my case. I uh, huff and puff and blow it down. I'm fine. <laughs> you get a little more information. I'm fine with whatever. <laughs> Okay. Any other correspondence? Okay, so I have a, okay. 
Anything else, Sarah? We're done. Did you sign okay. the orders? Yes. No, Everybody, I'm not yet. I signed it. I signed it. Pete is not. Okay, I will. <laughs> I've been a little busy four. here. Three out of um, four have signed it. I, I, I'm sure I will sign them, but I'm going to do it once we adjourn the meeting. So I have two signatures in this to do. I have a not related to the town of Middlesex directly issue for you. Okay. The meeting. I, I have so many things in my calendar for meetings with regard. What was the, what was the meeting that was on? So month? you missed probably the conversation that Chris uh, Christian said he wanted to do. Um, weekly or bi-weekly check-ins um, as his process is moving and yep. if he has questions and if he doesn't want to meet he'll email and say I don't have any reason to meet but this is just anyone who wanted to okay it really was just designed for so me, the real but meeting everybody else the real the meeting is, is this once a month and it's on Thursday and on yes. Thursday at 6 yep okay the real Good. Meeting is thank on you Thursday. and for you mr. Steve what do you think the chances are the Navy's gonna Oh God! This Wait, is what? really should be done I, I after really, we adjourn. This, we have adjourned. Oh, we no, have. No, you didn't say adjourned. They've got it. I said we are adjourned. No, you didn't. We, we are adjourned.